the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Shite balada balada katos kebrande koto shala bradia. Shibra sabaranda baraku shala kata pradeke de balade bos. Imbra kata barus kabaru shabaru sateta shikata la kato pradeke de balada ba. Zigera pu shabarande rakato shala bradia. Imbra kata parata balada ba. Pray in the spirit. Shimana sada balakata pradege de bele de boko sobrende ke telekata shala barada baka prosede balada barunda sada balakata pradege diash kapara kata barende ke tevele ke toko sodo bra shekete parasa de balakata mbrada kata balakatush lekete pretes sabarada balada baka kata pradege de bele katush shala banda rakata baba baba. Imprete kaparuta shabra diga da balada ba haru sababa shana malakata prende ke de balada bus shite balada balada ba kata prende ke de balada bus embra kata barra kata paruta sada prende ke de balada ba karya ta kata prende sada ba kash shakete kete 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 shakete kete 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 para kata barra ta kutoosh separando sada barra kata parianda kata prende ke de Imbra kata para kata prete kete bala kata prete kes kapadash la kata parus kamada dashanda la kata prende kete bala kata. Make sure you are praying. The spirit is always willing. The spirit is always willing. Shana bala da bala da bakush. Hela nda reka sabara da bala da bala da ba. Shela bara kada bala da bala da bala da bakush. Shele bara da bala da bala katus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are still going to pray, and I like you to pray from the depth of your heart. Father, everything that will cover my hearing and my seeing tonight, I tear it off my life. Lift your voice and pray. Please lift your voice. Pray seriously. Pray seriously. Every flesh that will cover my eyes and cover my ears tonight, I reject it. Are you praying? I'm in a season where I must rise in the spirit, I must rise in destiny. I put pressure on myself for the sake of my destiny. Is someone praying for the sake of your destiny? Is someone praying for the sake of your generation? Shika pakato sabranda kaparus kabariata embrakata parakato shadeke telekete prakata lakata. Give yourself wholly to them. Give yourself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear unto all. That thy profiting may appear. Shana malakata brandas katabalikata. I put myself under pressure tonight for the sake of my destiny, for the sake of superior levels in the spirit.
pray yes you must open you must hear eyes you must see in the name of Jesus Christ keep praying don't stop don't look around pray focus on Jesus and pray tonight my eyes see and my ears hear Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. Lord, I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. Change my life, breathe on me. Lift my life, breathe on me. Lord, I look to you for life. Change my life, breathe on me. Heal my life, breathe on me. Restore my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Lift my life, breathe on me. Bless my life, breathe on me. Change my life, breathe on me. Shalabarande salakata brahaska de belako. In the lekete bransa sasiata kata bradaga de baladakato. Pray, it's part of the meeting. Change my life, change my life, change my life. Let this not be another meeting. Change my life, oh God. Change my life. Change my life, change my life. Pray for your life, not your finances, not your ministry, not your business. Focus on your life. Change my life. Change my life. Tonight is about me, it's about my life. 
Leave your challenges. If you are not there, your challenges will not be there. Pray for yourself. This is about my life. Habaru samananda kalakatos. Emprakata parakato kata pekata regata. Sheketele parus kabariata. Emprakata parakata prekata lekata pratich. Seketele kotos sabradiata balaya. Change my life. Change my life. Shalabarakata paratus. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen to me, please. Please listen. Many times we focus on the things we want changed, not knowing that the troubles came because you were there no dead man has trouble no dead man needs finances no dead man needs breakthrough no dead man needs speed delay comes because you are there speed is needed because you are there everything is required because you are there we focus on everything we want change and forget about ourselves one of the primary assignments of prayer listen is not to petition God to meet needs. It's not even an instrument of warfare to ward off the power of darkness. It's not just a spiritual system of legislature. One of the major assignments of prayer, and this is where many believers continue to miss it, prayer was originally designed to change you. Let me show you a scripture. Luke chapter, keep standing. Luke chapter 9. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, please. Be sensitive tonight. Luke chapter 9. From verse 29. Everybody read. One, two, read. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white, glistening. He prayed and nothing around him changed. It was him that changed. When he prayed, his countenance changed. His raiment changed. You can change yourself in prayer. Did you hear what I said? You can change like... A, how many of you have seen a snake molting? It's a system by which they grow. They expand. They come out of their former self into a new self. So when you see that snake, the, 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 the former self, the, the shell of it that is left, is the former one. You can pray yourself into a newer version of yourself. You can pray yourself into a wiser version of yourself. You can, let me tell you this, prayer is not the only key, but whenever prayer is not the key, it becomes the hand that holds the key. If prayer is not the key, then it is the hand that holds the key to the door. Everything plus prayer increases you. Knowledge plus prayer increases you. Grace plus prayer increases you. Are we together? And as he prayed, it didn't say his situation changed. No. It didn't say as he prayed, those, there were times that he prayed and people from a distance were blessed but this time around as he prayed he was the one changing we're going to see pray a few minutes this prayer is not for my father this prayer is not for my bank account this prayer is not oh god take darkness out of my life this prayer is change me this is not the best fashion of me this is not the best it's, it's like an it's like an incubation room bring something out of my prayer life oh god that is not what went in if someone pray lift your voice pray you are praying to be changed you are not praying for things to change you are praying to be changed
Rakatusha la brande gede balakus. Brande ke paruta salabaka rakatusha dagani. Salabrandi gari katusha. Prada kala prakatusha gede balakata. Shaka paruka te brande gede balakata. Fix your eyes on Jesus and pray. They look on to him and their faces were lightened. Do not say I'm tired. Do not say I'm weak. That's a lie of the devil. Do not say I can't pray. You pray for your destiny by praying for yourself. You change things by changing. Take this weak version of myself to a strong version, oh God. Take this weak version of myself, this weak version of a man of God, this weak version of a woman, this weak version of an entrepreneur, this weak version of a career person. Let it be replaced by a strong one. There is power in prayer. Pray yourself to strength. Pray your way to authority. Pray your way to power in the spirit. Pray your way to strength. But the people that do know their God, they shall be strong. Pray your way to faith. That thy profiting may appear unto all. That thy profiting may appear unto all. That thy profiting may appear unto all. Your profiting will never, never, never appear unto all by default. You must pray your way to results. Pray your way to real power. Pray your way to strength. Pray your way to real anointing. Pray out weakness from your life. Pray out fear from your life. There is no 
male or female there is no young and old when it comes to spiritual things there is neither Jew nor Greek listen listen to me listen to me greatness is what you attract to your life by reason of what you are becoming more than by reason of what you have your results are a reflection of the transitions happening in your life or otherwise it is cheaper to change yourself than to change things because when you change things must change everything in your life is a statement to your destiny this is where you are in the spirit this is where you are in knowledge this is where you are in destiny instead of shifting things one by one shift yourself and everything will rise to follow you you truly change things by changing. 
you don't change things it's harder to change things one by one everything you draw to your life is a reflection of what version of you when you change your results change when you change even the operation of the spirit over your life changes he does not relate with everybody the same way at every dimension no hallelujah it's important we pray the biblical way to deal with weakness is to pray you pray out a weak version of yourself if you fail in the day of battle he say your strength is small hallelujah praise the lord please be seated god bless you be seated and be sensitive please play the strings for me mighty god give you praise good evening everybody it's my goal and my prayer and my desire that every service becomes an experience for someone's life an experience for someone's destiny we've been doing this for many years but we will never take for granted the opportunity that god gives for our growth and our transition every service is prepared intentionally not only to bless not just to honor the continuity of a ministry's program but it's an opportunity for the holy spirit to come once again and to change our lives and among the things we must rebuke is familiarity you must rebuke familiarity i know how god works i know how god moves i know somebody is about to shout i know somebody will roll as usual this is what you expect in koinonia that familiarity will turn you from a partaker to a spectator you can be in a place be a witness a spectator and not a partaker it takes more than just looking around to be a partaker it takes a heart connection an awareness that one moment in god's presence effectively maximized can turn a man's life around people say one word from god can change a man no one word from god does not change a man one word from god received understood and engaged is what will change a man one word from god to change a man is deception the devil has never been afraid of the word of god when the sower sowed it was satan himself that came and carried the seed one word received with meekness the bible says the engrafted word praise the lord I came tonight with a very serious burden um, and many times when the Lord wants you to teach teachings that are very very seasonal and very called for especially as the times demand he will bring them not as sermons he will bring them as burdens it will be a strong burden upon your spirit that will refuse to leave praise the Lord and um i've been focusing a lot especially about what i just talked about the power of changing things by changing the power of growing to superior realms of results by being the one to grow i think that sometimes we pay so much attention on the things around us we desire changed that we forget that those things are there because of us that means that if i refuse to transit in life no matter what i try to move it will come down back to my level 
are we together now there are many things you would not need to pray for if you pray for yourself let me repeat there are many things you would not need to pray for if you pray on and for yourself that means if you become the project of the growth there are many things you may not need to pray for again it's true in praying for yourself you will find out that you are praying for many other things your prayer life and indeed your destiny will be hard if you focus on any other thing outside yourself pay attention to yourself the development your transition and then you will find out that in doing so you are automatically influencing every result you desire let me repeat what i said earlier on while we're praying that greatness and success is what you attract to yourself not what you pursue what you attract to yourself by reason of who you are becoming if i'm still the person yesterday today then i do not deserve to get any result different from that which i had yesterday the results you seek cannot come to this version of you they are to come but not this version of you the anointing that you seek cannot come upon this version of you the prosperity you seek cannot enter into the pocket of this version of you so many times the power of restraint is not always demonic it is god waiting for the version of you that matches that result please listen and learn and grow this is spiritual intelligence not every restraint is an attack from satan not every restraint is proof that there is something demonic many times it can be god waiting for the version of you that is fit it is not because god cannot take the members from hundred to ten thousand it is not because god cannot take your finances from 500 to 10 million it is not because god cannot take your grace from this level to that level but it cannot come on this version of you the bible says you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin they are all called wine skins the difference is old and new you are still called a human being but the difference is the old version and the new version you are still called a man of god but the man of god before and the new man of god ah jesus said why seekest ye the dead among the living there was a version of me that lied lifeless you saw that version on the ground but it's no longer in the grave a version of me has arisen in the glory of the father not the one that walked the earth now without blood a version of me that lives by another life I learned this in my life and as a person I stopped wasting my time to change things it is hard to change things do you know how many things in your life you have to change if you pursue them one by one think how hard it is to look for good friends think how hard it is to look for quality connections and relationships think how hard it is to look for information every level already has the systems and the provisions waiting the cheapest way listen it is harder for me to try to reach to something higher than me to bring it down to my level it is wiser to grow to that level where it no longer becomes difficult remember if you watch a child growing up like one of these are little ones they try to reach for something and you see the difficulty they can fall many times it is cheaper sometimes they can try and stand upon something that can throw them and then pick what they want but an adult who has grown just comes and he can look from that height and without pressure pick the things that are hard today are not hard it is your level that defines them so if you grow you will find out that they are not so the finances that looks like a monster of a realm lord when will i go out of this is only the old version of you 
is looking at the destiny that only the new version of you can enter so it looks hard spiritually lord is it possible that i can step into this how will i start seeing visions what does it look like to see a vision will i be in myself will i fall down is it that i'm dying those are unnecessary questions just grow when you grow and enter those realms by experience you will have those answers there are many things about your biological life you did not need to ask it's a burden to ask every question what happens to me when i'm a teenager what happens when i'm 13 give me a detailed information of what will happen when i'm 14 years it's unnecessary just grow as you grow many times you will find out that you didn't even consciously pay attention to those transitions let me ask you a question do you know where your clothes of 10 years were do you know where they are now can you remember giving them out no can you remember burning them up no can you remember packing them to keep somewhere no they left for these ones to come he said mystery you don't understand remember where your first phone is remember you didn't throw it remember you didn't sell it remember you didn't sew it but where is it many times we don't know the things around us are living things too they are governed by laws they live quietly and we do not know may the lord give us understanding that the things that we call dead are not dead they can hear and they can see they are more obedient to the systems of god than us are we together i never had to tell anybody stop giving me this kind of honorarium stop tearing 2a and rolling 500 naira inside and chucking it in my pocket as a bribe that would be stupid and arrogant the key is to grow when you grow a law prohibits individuals from approaching you that way are we together so many times when you look at the things around you and you don't like them they were not designed to live they were designed to be the reality of anybody in that realm if you don't like them move to the realm where there are realities that match your desire please listen to me this will give us intelligence there are many prayers we pray that are it's just the mercy of god that answers them they are not wise prayers they are prayers that are a reflection of spiritual ignorance many times the prayer is not take this away from me many times the prayer is take me out of this realm the realities are fixed they are there an heir as long as he's a child he says differeth not from a slave though he be lord of all he says but he's under tutors and governors that means that when you find out there are tutors and governors around the issue is not to drive them away the issue is to grow out of childhood and you may not need them again praise the lord yes another analogy and then i'll begin to teach on what i have tonight there are many primary schools i believe they still do it where the junior students in that primary school wear short trousers is that correct and then when they get to a particular level they start to wear long trousers now imagine someone in say primary two goes to the teacher and say look i'm tall is something that came genetically and because of that it may not look good on me to wear a short trouser the rules will not change because of you but when you change you change the rules you don't change the rules by changing the rules you change the rules by leaving the realm where those rules apply all rules don't apply the same at every level it is true hmm. are we together so we seek to transit by the spirit to realms where certain things no longer hold listen to me look up please look up you're writing but look up if you do not pay attention to what i'm saying this is what will happen to you everybody speaks from the reality that his transition has captured 
so many times when you hear people speak you will interpret their speakings from your realm and based on your realm it looks untrue with all humility if in 24 hours nobody favors me is proof something is wrong at this level you see that yes the level god has brought me makes it is either an attack or something about my life 24 hours cannot happen without someone favoring me this is the reality at this level are we together now yes once upon a time if i'm not favored in a year i'll have to be patient for one year to know whether it's an attack or not at the end of that year i say no this year it, it was not like that and then you pray and then you rise to a realm where it becomes a month you rise to a realm where it becomes a week if nobody calls my phone in 24 hours seeking for help something is wrong i will go for a retreat 24 hours i wake up every day without fail with text messages of people needing the grace of god upon my life once upon a time i think something happened to my phone and there was no network i got up in the morning and flipped my phone and it was empty i said this is something is wrong something has to be wrong in five hours my phone did not ring nobody sent a text something is wrong i off the phone and put it back and there the text i said this is it because that result did not look like my realm now listen please listen to what i'm teaching you there are levels where if you pray for one hour you must punish yourself hello this is not religion you truly must punish yourself because the demand on your life the daily servicing of your altar one hour is too small if you don't meet that target you must punish yourself by an extended prayer time someday why because before you finish thanking god for what he has done the time should have gone what god has done is to before you start listening and say lord let me name my blessings thank you because the other day they didn't kill my member somewhere thank you oh god because the wicked did not get a reason to laugh one hour is already covered there are people who don't have much to say thank you for thank you lord because i'm alive thank you because even though my father is alive oh lord here are my needs but there are things god has done to you in some realms it is wicked to use 10 minutes to say thank you now the time someone is interceding is your thanksgiving time you use that one hour to roll on the ground and say thank you sometimes you use 15 minutes to just keep quiet and let your tears say thank you before you start talking that's why i'm telling you praying for one hour in certain realms is not talking in tongues for one hour there are activities in some realms that is only intercession and warfare what and what intercession and warfare because of the seriousness of where you are but there are realms that god has given you some level of victory intercession will be after a prolonged period of cry and thanksgiving so two people go to pray come show two people go to pray they represent different realms one person enters and say father i give you thanks you are the lion of the tribe of judah this is the day or the night whatever time of the day that the lord has made i rejoice i give thanks Shut up and straight you go into lord these are my petitions help me oh this is plenty the list is increasing lord help me at the point you start praying you start lamenting you are right at that realm you will find out that the person you went to pray with you will think he cannot pray this is what you'll be doing thank you jesus father i glorify you he's praying no? you are merciful you are merciful you are merciful and a song is playing lord you are merciful and you are there praying and getting angry i say hey, this guy doesn't know what he's doing you are not at the same realm listen carefully listen carefully listen that person is taking out time later on you are exhausted you are thirsty you are tired 
you don't even know you have been praying and miss all around he knows you are praying and miss he's not correcting you because there is a provision of god's mercy that whoever is at that realm god should ignore his mistakes and answer him so you find out that you are praying a lot of nonsense at that realm and you receive supernatural answers they are not a proof that you are correct the person standing here already knows you didn't enter his gates with thanksgiving you didn't even get to his court you are shouting around the gate but god came out and helped you that is not how he helps men he just came to help you now watch this this is if you understand you will now get what i'm telling you that your prayer life imagine that two of you come you you truly with without without a sense of pride two of you cannot be prayer partners it's not like you can pray together but you can't be prayer partners you can only be prayer partners corporately and to round up maybe belong to the same group because this guy is already he brings out his piece of paper and there's nothing to bring out you tell him all right pray and you lie down flat only to stand up after two hours you are not sleeping you know it's part of the prayer time and the guy says guy bros i'm tired i'll finish i need to go i'll come back later and he says, okay god bless you there are certain realms where you cannot pray with people there are things god would do and tell you that requires you alone with him so when people are there he will relate with you in a way and manner that is general and you have to remain behind because you know you and god have not talked yet people are there and you are praying generally oh lord thank you for everything okay may god bless you sir we are going to sleep and you tell them go and then immediately you go the atmosphere changes the holy spirit now comes as one adorned for that realm there are ways he cannot relate the the weirdness of his operation at that realm cannot be understood by people because sometimes as soon as he comes there you will do things that don't make sense you will walk alone and fall down and that's it you are in a vision and for the next 30 minutes you are there do you think that person will leave you alone he will wake you and shift you till your spirit cannot return back to your body again so he will allow them go you don't covet a man's prayer dimension by saying let that dimension come and meet me no you don't have enough testimonies to pray that kind of prayer you've not gone through enough pain to know what a man will be doing for three hours everything in your life is paid for by everybody you don't know what it means to be attacked what commission have you been given what assignment what what is the devil going to attack you for it's just general attacks here and there just to bring down your spiritual life nothing serious so you can stroll around for 10 minutes and go but there are certain burdens that when at when they're on your head the time it takes me to pray for one department alone in koinonia will surprise you there are, when you know see listen the weight on your head determines how you walk if you are carrying a cup on your head you can even leave it and walk around if you are carrying a head pan you can walk around if you are carrying a destiny the walk is so slippery god must lead you on how to walk this is what people do not understand so this thing people generally call prayer is many things at many realms that's why you see me encourage people i as i began to grow in the things of god i found out that i cannot pray comfortably in the daytime my life at this level will not allow me to maximize prayer the distraction that will come from my phone ringing i don't off my phone whether i'm on pulpit or my phone is if my phone is off i'm either taking a flight or maybe something is done you see that i charge my phone an average of twice every day i have to because of you do you know living is not general the concept of living is dimensional listen to me that means when you are tired of certain things certain experiences around you 
someone else is coming into that dimension so you are not going to say lord take away those things your job is to rise to the next dimension are we together now yes once upon a time i remember those days if there were 30 people and i was going to minister to them i would have to lay hands on everybody one by one it was very exhausting and i said god there has to be a better way once upon a time if god is talking to me and i see in the spirit that god wants to touch you i will have to walk to you to touch you for that word to come to pass that was it was not what god could do it was what my renewal and my alignment at that level could allow him to do and i knew that if i continue that way what if i have 30 minutes to preach and god wants to touch 500 people i follow them one by one touch somebody in overflow three come back touch this how do you touch the people online and then i said god there has to be a way and he said of course there is a way for i am a man under authority and i say to one go and he goeth that your words can become you you don't have to move your presence can be poured into your words you can send it on errand backed up by the anointing of the spirit and it will produce the same effect and i said okay god what does it take let's go if you are interested now when you rise to that realm you will see it and then sometimes a new believer will sit down and be wondering wow how does this thing happen if the holy spirit shows me that he wants to touch someone in overflow three now you see all i need to do is not just to speak it or say it you see that you agree with god it looks simple until you are taught what really happens you come and collect the mic and talk i will tell you when god wants to touch somebody your job is to just say it and you will be very surprised to see as if god doesn't love you so most of this prayer lord why did you disgrace me i went to this meeting expecting the result of a realm you went to the meeting with the expectation of a realm you have not entered because you saw somebody and you said no abba this must happen are we together there are people who carry graces as soon as they sit down and begin to talk something about the realm and the dimension of god that they walk in will force you to pay attention they don't have to say keep quiet no there are realms where they say oh yeah keep quiet now praise god everybody listen but there are realms where there are other provisions some spiritual arsenals have been provided that compel men to hear you so you can see two men of god operating everybody's bringing his possibilities are we together yes to believe that everybody is just generically carrying eternal life carrying the holy spirit you are right but you are wrong people come with their realms and the possibilities that come with those realms listen to me and that means that if and when you are tired of what you are seeing and you do not like it the bible says who shall ascend to the hill of the lord there is a hill there is a level where you can rise to elijah was sitting uphill and he was able to see those who were coming and he called down fire on them he was sitting at an altitude physically but that can also be symbolic of an altitude in the spirit papa Iya deboe can just come and stand on this pulpit and just say thank you and speak and say let me bless you i declare that before the end of this week you will be favored now he's speaking from a realm you will say amen it may not sound charismatic it may not sound apostolic nobody falls nobody rises but the nature of the spiritual provision that follows his grace will insist that that word comes to pass not because you believe it for the sake of the position he represents to the body 
so you see him not say well uh, do you have there are realms where you say have faith press i'm sensing unbelief you are stopping this thing from happening truly there are dimensions where god does a thing not just for his name's sake he does it to honor the covenant he has with the vessels it's true that's why you can find somebody will come under a ministry and way before he starts learning how to tight he will start receiving results of a tighter breakthrough open doors and when you meet him and say you are so successful teach me about success it will be the worst 30 minutes of your life he will vent ignorance from a to z and say why are you succeeding he said, well i don't know and truly he's right he doesn't know and if he makes a mistake to go out of that covering in one week everything will dry because that thing will come his results will come back to look like his true realm do you believe what i'm sharing with you yes the animals did not want to be saved they didn't know how to be saved but they came under the covering of noah's ark it was built with food inside to sustain them the animals would come out after the flood like heroes but where they left alone they would die there are dimensions in the spirit and there are realities that means that if i want you to move to another dimension of results then i must be able to guide you on the principles that will transit you from where you are to where you need to be there are destinies that no matter how you pray and fast at that level there are certain levels of the blessings of the lord that may never be made manifest your capacity at that level will not allow god bless you there is no need for that level of blessing at that level are we together there are things you must be taught that means every time come look up please that means every time the word of god is coming to you it's not only edifying you listen very carefully it's not only informing you it's transiting you that means a possibility exists that you came here koinonia at a realm and by the time we're sharing the grace you think because you wore the same clothes you are the same person going out immediately you step out you will find out that the reality that followed you here is not the reality that went out with you many of you especially men of god come here and you just sit for one meeting and at the end of it sometimes you don't even get to see me and you are prayed for and that's it all you need to do is go back to your church or your fellowship and the first surprise is when you open your bible ah, ah, what is this again then you stand to pray and it will surprise you let me tell you another thing that will surprise you your worship team members that didn't follow you will start singing and you will think this is koinonia worship team you took something more than you back to your meeting are you seeing that remember you didn't call them to tell them look this is where i went to this is the grace i carried you went quietly but the nature of that grace is like a software it starts reprogramming everything around you to reflect the level you have now entered all of a sudden you find out that if you are someone who were not excellent for instance and you contacted that grace for excellence you come back with it you don't have to start teaching first you will find out that in a span of two months exceptionally excellent people will start coming to your platforms they were called there is a grace that calls them they don't hear you because you are not yet at the level where they hear there are ministries that no matter what branch you open even if they open the branch close to a mosque they must have excellent people it's not like they bring people from the headquarters the grace was designed to ransack the city and look for those who must make the anointing that is upon that level to walk to come there are cities where people hardly get land for church and for certain things but there are ministries that enter with some graces as soon as they enter 
there must be vacancy suddenly somebody gets visa and is going abroad and he leaves his house and they demolish that house and it becomes a church the pressure that that grace puts on a territory until there are results please listen to what i'm telling you that means there is a grace you can carry that when you stand somewhere it becomes impossible for people to ignore you it's not you you have risen to a level that grace will begin to compel it will orchestrate a scenario that must bring you out no matter where you hide something must happen to the point that if god if it's a grace at that level god has mandated that at that level any time you go you must be seen and his grace must be acknowledged so you are humble and because you are in that place god that anointing can make somebody who has no business coming there who knows you to come there so that he can announce you and then leave the grace on your life there are dimensions of favor that you can enter into huh that even if it's on a saturday night you speak over people they must be blessed even if it's sunday during service it's true it's true there are graces please listen to me there are dimensions you get to in the spirit that when you make certain spiritual utterances and say god said even if it's not god that said it because of the realm you occupy he will honor what you have said and rebuke you when you go back are we together that means it is possible for a man of god a prophet to come and see learn this a prophet can come and see that Sheun is supposed to be blessed October. That's what the revelation gave and is accurate. But I can come with a dimension. Listen carefully. Until a higher dimension comes, the highest grace that spoke is what works. But when a higher grace comes, I can make that October become tomorrow. I'm not a prophet. I came with a realm of intimacy. And a covenant that I have with God. And I can look at him and say, my friend, um, something fell down and you gave me. Look at this. I bless you by tomorrow. And God will take what, it doesn't mean the prophet lied. It is the implication of the realm that was introduced. <laughs> Believers hear this and grow. So if you don't understand, you may go back and say, fake prophet. You prophesied nonsense. No. The prophet himself, even that office is in levels. A prophet in this realm is not greater than a Christian in this realm. The realm which is a reflection of his work with God must bow. Listen, the office that that man has, as powerful as it is, there is a realm of intimacy you can have with God that equals that office. You are not a prophet but the level of dealing you have gotten with your result is the same result a prophet will get so when you stand side by side by with a prophet they will call two of you prophets you are not a prophet you have only transited to a realm where there is no difference between you and the result of a prophet or an apostle These are deep mysteries in the kingdom that many people do not understand. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's powerful. That means if you truly want to be a blessing, more than office, more than titles, seek to be transitioned to a deep dimension of work with the Holy Spirit where there are results you will command that it looks like you are getting results from every office a point will come your members will not even know who you are they said this guy is a prophet but are you really a prophet this guy is an evangelist but you are prophesying more than a prophet and you say you are an evangelist you say god told me i'm an evangelist 
you started as an evangelist your intimacy took you to the realm where only prophets should get to and took you to a realm higher than that dimension that means it is possible for a man of god you offend to curse you in anger and truly it will happen but a man of god will come who is not a prophet not an apostle not anything but in a dimension of grace he has been given the power he will nullify that thing and say it is true based on this course you should die tomorrow but i hold your hands god look at him for my sake let it go it's true i'm looking for the best way i will help you understand this thing tonight these are the dimensions that are at work in us that certain things can happen to people because certain people are there are we together yes all of these things you see are provisions that god put in place to ensure that the body continues to grow and that we continue to receive results you can't believe that i've not even touched my message tonight i just came with a hunger and a burden let's see what i can touch i took the a part of what i want to share last week responding to the situation that we have that is widespread now people getting frustrated as to whether the word of god produces results or not many of you have seen the rate of suicide and the rate of not armed robbery not boko haram these are people killing themselves now a man leaves his family and then they are called that he died left a note i'm tired of life and that's it and young people also killing themselves and those who are alive it's almost as if they are dead already depression teenagers having depression young people having high blood pressure all kinds of health related issues there is an answer i attempted to answer that question last week was it or the week before last that the reason the first reason that we looked at was because of the nature and the kind of mentorship and teaching are we together i stated that people have been taught that the value of their life is in the abundance of the physical things they get and so by the time you find out that you are unable to get a car and a house and a child and a husband and a wife and certain things at certain levels self-inflicted frustration begins to come listen carefully and as a result people become depressed you hear people saying as old as i am I, I don't have a child or i don't have a wife or i don't have a husband or i don't have my own house can you imagine at this age i'm still renting can you imagine this and that can you imagine at this age i have only three girls no boy you know and all of these kinds of things and i told us that it is because first the kinds of teachings please listen carefully the kinds of teachings that we have taught people we have taught people that spirituality and in many circles sadly that spirituality is only measured in the acquisition of physical things are we together so by the time i have by the time i have certain things for a prolonged period of time maybe a house a car and all of that i am perceived to not be growing spiritually are we together yes why do you still have this car after 10 years why are you still living here after 20 years so that pressure to do things to prove that the word is working when our, our expectations continually become disappointed then we are plunged into that state of depression are we together but then tonight's teaching also is an attempt to bring balance to it to help us understand it is important for us to get results and i want to talk um maybe just a few minutes our time is already spent 
on the fact that i believe that many people are unable to rise to the realms please listen the realms that will allow their lives reflect the faithfulness of god among many things because we have not learned thank you we have not learned that success is not something you pursue please say after me you do not pursue success you do not pursue greatness there is nobody who tries to pursue success or pursue greatness whether spiritually financially and otherwise that will ever have it it is not something you pursue please listen to me it is something that you draw it is attracted to your life on the strength of who you become and listen to me there are certain traits every blessed man every anointed man every influential man everyone that has been trusted with grace and influence will tell you listen there are a set of traits that individuals must possess you call it character you call it whatever it is there are belief systems say belief systems there are there are mindset conditionings that you must be able to have that will allow you to transit like i said earlier to the realms where these things effortlessly let me tell you this every time you struggle unnecessarily to get something stop immediately did you hear what i said every time you are struggling unnecessarily to get a thing stop immediately it may be proof that you have not acquired the spiritual the psychological and the spiritual maybe sometimes the intellectual stamina to bring that thing this is rainy season no farmer would go to the farm and have to labor so much to till the ground why because part of the provision of the rainy season is a system that softens the soil are we together now but if you try to till the ground by november december especially at this part of the country you're going to have a hard time so there are certain things we are trying to get is proof that although you are trying to reach out and it's running away from you is telling you something by running that you are not yet qualified for me so instead of running unnecessarily cut away and stay back and build the belief systems build the track record in the spirit that makes for that thing and i tell you whatever it is that left you will come to you and stick to you and refuse to go it is true for finances it is true for ministry it is true for leadership it is true for the anointing it is true for revelation it is true for anything i want to walk you through a few belief systems tonight maybe just two three and we'll pray since our time is gone that i believe is pivotal to our entering these new seasons that the lord has spoken to us about there are many of us who can sense in the spirit that i am at the edge i am i've exhausted my current level are we together now that financially spiritually and otherwise but let me limit it to our uh, the things that pertain unto life the things that matter to our life our upkeep our welfare and so on and so forth because that is what is causing the depression i don't think anyone will go and kill himself just because he doesn't know god he would rather fast he would rather pray he would rather buy books but when you are unable to pay the fees of your children when you are unable to do well when you are unable to take care of your parents and do all of that the accumulated frustration can push you to a point do you know that in all fairness i think in the last one or two weeks i've gotten at least one text every day people just calling and saying apostle please you have to talk to me otherwise i've been sensing i've been hearing a voice say i should kill myself i'm good for nothing repeatedly from different regions and then i knew that this this is terrible hearing voices getting frustrated feeling my life cannot you know my life would not make sense the the latest of the suicide issues i got to hear was a man 
a father who had a quarrel with his wife this is a true story some of you may have heard it a man who picked a quarrel with his wife and she took out time and blasted him and told him how irresponsible how shameless how disappointed she was in him how sad she felt that she got married to him and told him is it that his children were also disappointed and the last they said was that the man went out he just left and that was it they thought he was kidnapped they thought he was killed they didn't see him for a few days and they thought he was just you know men and their anger until police traced down and they found out that the man had died and they traced that the death was suicide now if you trace i'm not talking against church but if you trace that man will have to be associated with a group a church a fellowship or some kind of spiritual platform that means it is irresponsible for any man of god any spiritual leader to not at least respond to these things listen sociologically speaking men of god are also mind control systems men of god are also agents of transformation and much more than helping people to build their spiritual convictions we must pay attention to make sure that when there is an there is a psychological epidemic within a territory it is wise for every responsible man of god who has a sizable influence over people to contribute in making the people stay in a position that will not allow satan to bring all of those kinds of predicaments are we together say i need results in my life it is true that results are not the basis of our confidence it is true that results are not the object not the motivation behind our pursuit of god and our walk in the faith however as i have said i will continue to say again that results among other things are a system of consolation results are proof that you are adhering to spiritual laws results are also proof in many regards that god is with you not all the time but many times rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god how do we know for no man can do these things so when god is with you there are some things there are some evidences attestations of his presence that must be there and the lord put it in my heart and i know by experience and by the privilege of mentorship from exceptionally successful people in the faith life financially and so on and so forth that there might be a few things we may be missing as believers or other things that we need to inculcate that can transit us to the levels that we seek to have the results that will make us at ease to know and believe that god is faithful are we together so i want to share with us a few things that just take note of it we'll just take three for the sake of time and then we'll pray tonight hallelujah the first belief system that i want us to learn tonight that helps us to be great and helps us to transit well look up please is that all truly great people do not derive their confidence and their self-worth from the things that are outside them please listen all great people do not derive their self-worth from the abundance of the external things that they have cars houses certificates achievements as powerful as all these things are no truly great man especially in the kingdom derives his self-worth from the abundance of these things that means that when i buy a new shoe when i buy a new cloth then i feel more successful when the cloth spoils i feel less successful that's a terrible way to live are we together now the bible um i think that should be i hope is uh what scripture now is it luke chapter 12 it just came to my spirit let's look at it luke chapter 12 i believe it is jesus was teaching luke chapter 12 yes and verse 15 give it to us please quickly Luke chapter 12 and verse 15 everyone please look up his projected here's what the Bible says Jesus is teaching now and he said unto them take heed and beware of what covetousness greed 
greed that's the word there greed it says for a man's life consisted not in the abundance of what things which he possesseth. that means the true value of your life and my life is not in cars is not in houses are we together now so you must bring yourself to a point where even though i'm trusting god for a car a house i'm trusting god for um advanced certifications i'm trusting god to go abroad i'm trusting god to increase membership i'm trusting god to have children and so on and so forth my life cannot be and my sense of success cannot be defined by these things you know why because these things vacillate they go up and they go down praise the lord i was sharing i think it was with our school of ministry students yesterday and um it started with the leaders during the leaders meeting um i traveled to one of the states and my phone just fell into mud and water and it was just gone just gone completely and while they were still deciding for me what other phone i would buy to replace that one i decided to take the old phone remember that my old phone that you people hate so much that you've done your best to make sure i throw away you know i dusted the whole thing and i got it back in shape and then when i went for the leaders meeting i could see the body language all the leaders oh not again you could see apostle you've left this you know and all of that and um i use the opportunity to start sharing with them a bit of what i'm sharing with you now imagine that i tied my sense of self-worth to a, an exceptional phone i will now begin to tell myself things that i think you are thinking ah that means apostle's finances is going down this one that he replaced this phone maybe he sold it all because he's broke because he's looking for something now remember you are not thinking that it is a make-believe that has come as a result of my tying my self-worth to phones there are people who cannot leave their homes until they borrow certain things and wear there are people who cannot because they have created perceptions there are men of god and women of god who cannot be themselves more than half of their life is not them it's a dangerous way to live listen very carefully i show you a quick way to suicide tie your self-worth to things and sooner or later you find out that you will need a knife you will need a hoe a cutlass or a rope to kill yourself because of disappointed expectations there are people who have tied their self-worth to the quality and the wealth of the kinds of families they have come from so they will deny their parents because your mother is somewhere maybe roasting corn or selling something by the road and the impression that you have given people is that you are an exceptional harvard type young man who most likely has spent a major part of his life abroad and now they need to see your mother or your father and based on your belief system you think that looking at her and her state will will be a disadvantage to the perception you are proposing so you will call your mother your auntie say just one of our relatives that just came to stay with us it's, i mean even me i'm surprised now seeing her outside you think what i'm saying is silly except for the fact that it is true how many people will never be proud of even their homes where they live your family house yes i know that they use mud to build it but the mud is not inside your mind but simply because you don't want we have a slang that our generation called this call it fall in your hand correct how will i take these people in my department my departmental people want to greet my parents how will i now take them to a house that is smelling the there's humidity even inside the house the carpet i mean everything there are roaches flying around i don't want to be associated with that less the person who wants to marry me who has been perceiving that i'm a lady who was born inside an airplane may now have to make up his mind and change his perception let me advise you and let me encourage you i have a responsibility over you listen to me if you tie your self-worth to anything outside you get set for a shock in this life hallelujah god forbid but if any of my vehicles have break down and it's time for me to come for koinonia 
I would stop a bike outside quickly and say, Mr. Man, please take me. I'm late. And, and you know, members can rob this. They'll say, my apostle, the servant of the living God. You know, they, they will rub it in and make you say, bike, stop. Stop. Let me just go back home. Tell them I'm not around. If you need things to validate who you are, you are in trouble. Because you will never have enough things. That's why we seek to change phones. Listen, let your motivation be a sincere desire to transit to a more effective version of yourself. Not that it is in the acquisition of these things. That's why we are disappointed. Now I bought the phone. Now I, I got the new hair. Now I got the clothes. I got the designers. I expected you to notice it and commend me and you ignored me. So frustration starts. Are we together now? Did you not notice my perfume? Have you not noticed that I've changed perfume? What is my business? I'm thinking about my own destiny somewhere. Did you not notice I changed a car? Did you not notice I moved to a house? Have you not noticed that levels have changed? I will never tie anything, my self-worth to anything no matter how great they are i tell you the truth they are mundane things this teaching may not be popular but it's the way of peace it's not teaching you to be a mediocre it's giving you rest rest you've heard me say it again anything that is what's taking my life on i put it inside me god holy spirit quality information anything that is too big to enter inside me is not worth my attention people's vehicles spoiled and they they were too embarrassed to go to work why because they say ah Ogasi or your car spoiled my self-worth and your self-worth must be a derivative of who you are in Christ and what he has done and what you now possess so the first thing I'm advising you and listen to me koinonia I have a responsibility over you and over those who are following the mainstream mindset is to receive an applause because of things you bought a new watch how much is this watch 300,000 Wow you are wearing a 300,000 watch that's somebody's salary for one year you are not a small man oh, and you enjoy it foolishly not knowing that that watch can be stolen it it can spoil it can leave you god can instruct you to sew it many things can happen around that watch why will you tie your self-worth and then you find out that you are no longer with the watch and then you are just looking someone may be noticing that i'm not wearing the watch uh, well let me just explain god asked me to, who asks you the, nobody is thinking about you as they are looking at you they are thinking about their problems ah, where will i call my mother now oh god let someone send me 400 naira recharge card and you are there in a make-believe of your own manufacture Say, I reject bondage. Shout it, I reject bondage. Ah, you used to, you used to wear a hair of 10,000 before. What happened? I noticed you have started wearing the one of 115 and 2. Is everything all right with your finance? What is your business? Does the 150 not stay? Oh, please. I noticed you used to bab every two weeks but in the last one week i'm just a concerned brother it's like a, you is that you don't have money if you don't have money use bab just just clean it let it shine let it shine let it shine for god's sake don't be under pressure and say i must do this i must be this if you come to my house and meet me drinking gary i will only put it in a better cup if i honor you but Gary, you must drink. I will not borrow money to buy minerals because of you. No. 
listen to me be healed of this societal pressure and let me tell all family people in Kononia, please hear me. Let nobody put pressure on you. Whether a minister, whether a leader, it should not be had in this ministry. That because anybody came to visit, they put pressure on you, you must fry plantain, fry chips. If you have it, praise God. If you don't, even if you don't have anything, put cold water in the fridge and serve. Do not derive self-worth. Don't expect people to treat you unusually just because you bought a new car. Just because you bought a new house. Um, just to let you know that levels have changed. Um, I got a job with NMPC and for starters, they gave me 1.5. And uh, because of that, I want to see Apostle. I don't have the time to join the queue. Can you please fast track the thing? I have a seed and the seed is a sizable one. What do you think I am? That's why it's good for a man of God to be blessed. Because when you are blessed, you are not looking at anybody's envelope and checking the size. No. No, we know man after the flesh. Please listen very carefully. Say in the name of Jesus, my confidence and my self-worth will never be on external things. It will be on who I am in Christ. And what Jesus has done in my life so be proud of yourself and be proud of your level if it's only one shoe you have wear it every Friday wear it every Sunday let us see it as a testament so that the day God blesses you anybody who says it was a mistake you will not be the one to answer I'll say I was a witness I saw that one shoe for two years while he was walking the world Are we together sisters don't let any brother come to you in the abundance of substance or things just to toy around with your mind and toy around with your life say you know i'm this and that and that my father is a governor of which state what is your surname are the states in nigeria many that we don't know my father is a this my father is a king my mother is a this i'm a prince as you see i'm just a humble one no whether you are a prince or not that's not anybody's business people should honor you because of genuine character that you are a man of character that you are a woman of character is a nobler reason for honor than things number two ready <laughs> koinonia is great praise the lord You must conquer greed. Write it down. The one cancer behind the, the restraint of God to bless many people. Greed. 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 You know, most people think rich people are the ones who are greedy. I tell you this sincerely. The reason why many poor people, poor Christians especially, who have an advantage of the Holy Spirit. If you have an advantage of the Holy Spirit and he's watching you poor, there's something you are doing to him. He is there as the advantage in your life. Greed. Many believers are greedy. It's shown in their givings. You started giving 10 naira as a student, as offering. And now you are director you are given 20 naira is that the measure of the lifting of god upon your life no greed closely related to greed please write selfishness a selfish generation will never become an impactful generation please listen very carefully jesus christ is speaking to us a selfish generation will never become an impactful generation what is selfishness look at this come doctor selfishness and self-centeredness is when you desire something so bad you do not care what effect it creates on others selfishness is not desiring good things it is desiring good things to the point that you do not care what it does to others 
that means that i so want to get to this speaker i don't care if i match and i match and i put dr emeka i just want to reach there there are many of us who are like that many nigerians are like that and i'm cautioning you because it's a spirit everywhere it's like nobody cares about the effect of what they are they are wanting to rise causes for others i want to be a ceo i will kill anybody if possible to be that ceo me myself the language of our generation is what is in it for me once there is nothing in it for you it's not your business no it's not the language of great people great leaders the great leaders are selfless people great people are selfless people the bible says looking up to jesus jesus did not come to the earth to pursue an agenda of himself please listen to me i've taught us that it is about us but not all about us when your life becomes all about you then you are in trouble This ministry was founded upon selflessness truly selflessness many of you as you are now God is helping you but you want to so grow and rise there is none of our children here that is going to school because of your school fees you are waiting till the day you become a millionaire some of them their school fees is two thousand three thousand ten thousand you are so engrossed you can package hundred thousand and bring let me lay hands on you to climb the ladder fast but a little child can come and hug you and say uncle i'm not going to school well, let me join am i your am I your, your father you see that selflessness selflessness the selfishness in our world is so terrible so terrible people will do anything and not mind they will they will hit your car on the road because they want to hurry up break your 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 what they call it your side mirror and just on you and say sorry i see that's the solution to it i'm in a hurry to wear how about many of us here you don't care if your siblings rise listen you are not called to carry everybody's load in your life but you are called to at least pay attention to the effect of what your rising is creating you can't ignore everybody and your whole world is about you ladies listen to me because you are the ones that are most hit with this mindset it is always about me my money is for me my everything is for me someone can give you two thousand naira recharge card as a seed you will flash him to call you so you will say thank you what do we call that greed and selfishness listen listen to me many of our parents today many of our parents respectfully speaking and with due honor to our elderly people here many of our parents this is what closed their door they were so willing to succeed that they kicked every destiny helper out and when they got to a place where they needed help there was nobody to help them now when they were in the civil service some of them got to the echelon of their their pursuit they never raised anybody all they were concerned about is me i must sit down and eat and now they've retired no young person can come and say sir in 1995 it was because of you i got a job today i've come with a seed to say thank you let me tell you sincerely speaking many of us here are young people but let me tell you if you are old and nobody sees the need to take care of you and to say thank you it's a sign that you spent your life in selfishness and greed are we together last year during my birthday the greatest gift that was given to me was a letter by my little children they write me letters all the time they write all kinds of things but i love their letters and i read every one of it they draw love they write jesus on it they try to draw my face they write you have been a nice daddy thank you those things mean a lot to me 
than chicken than whatever it is you eat those things and go to the toilet and it's all but those things are a reflection it's a sign that when you are old those ones they can come to you and say make sure this person never cries even in old age you say but it's not your father he said he was better than my father if nobody can remember you for good it's a sign that you are digging the grave already even while you are alive please hear me great people are not great because they are pursuing all they want it's not all about you everything god gives you people should rejoice with you because they know that by the grace of god and with all humility even if it's the crumbs from the table it will reach them i look at us please look at me i can tell you why god has not answered your prayer of financial prosperity he has discerned the extent of greed that in your being blessed nobody nobody many of us are so greedy and selfish that anytime you are blessing somebody they know that you are looking for something whether you are looking for a life partner or you are looking for a destiny helper or you are looking for for something it is not you to give i think if i stop giving it may affect me i may even fall down and die but you know apostle we are not very blessed it's you people that god has helped that is the talk of a greedy person if you can't give clothes there is food one day you can make up your mind to cook two pots of food and call somebody and say i may not do much now but i am breaking the spirit of greed please come and eat in my house they come the next day and say no 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 i was only training myself don't come every day don't be ashamed of saying it because human beings will always take you for granted you do it once and pursue them and don't feel bad tell them please at training i will, when when i get to that realm you will come but for now come and eat are we together say in the name of jesus the spirit of greed the spirit of selfishness i curse it from my life many believers are like that two women or two men can be talking i can be talking with dr emeka and in his presence i will bring out two thousand naira buy egg roll and minerals and hold it while we are talking and finish it and eat the egg roll and squeeze the leather and match it Hapa. it's inhuman to live like that giving is living you must trust god for grace don't wait till you are a millionaire i'm telling you listen this these are belief systems that will make your life exceptional god will never trust a greedy and a selfish person when he sends a word to jacob is because jacob can let that word reach israel if god gives you money can god look at many people in koinonia today and say instead of blessing five people and giving them school fees i know they are coming but can i bless you and then they rejoice the angels rejoice and say these children have gone to school why because one person was blessed what does it take for god to give you a job what does it take for god to turn the economic tide in your life it takes more than studying business let me tell you it takes more than we've taught you a lot and you know that there are astute business people in this place we're not just men of god we're not daft people we're economically sound we're financially sound but i tell you this much more than just the value you give who you are is higher than what you do i had a conversation of recent with a very wealthy man such a rare privilege and i met him and i asked him one question i said sir let me ask you one question i said what kind of people will you be looking for at this level and he looked at me and smiled and said apostle you are very smart i said thank you sir my mind was just on the answer and he said should i tell you honestly he said yes and then he kept quiet and took a deep breath he said i will answer you in a story 
and then he told me a story and at the end of it he said let me test i already told you you're intelligent what kind of people do you think i'll be needing i said trustworthy people he said that's it the moral of the story he gave me was that he would pay any amount to have people who are selfless enough he said every storekeeper and every foreman he employed cheated him and 95 percent of them were christians recommended by pastors he sincerely told me that the non-believers who have handled that branch of his business have been more honest than even the people because of greed 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 let them know that the word is working so you steal everything you steal cement you steal everything and sell it and quietly cover it up do you not know that when truth was buried it came out of the grave hallelujah there are very very listen let me teach you this if you are a businessman here please more than value and productivity look for selfless people when you find selfless people you have not found cheap people you have found priceless people our generation is full of everybody who is looking for everything for myself let me quickly cash in on the moment while i have the time some of you looking at me now as born again as you are let me keep you in a room with plenty money scattered if i count it you will behave because it's counted but let me just scatter it and leave you you will first check whether there's a cctv look around and pray in tongues so that those outside would think there's prayer going on and you just bend as if you are sweeping and carry one and put in your pocket who do you think is watching god alone demons angels the demons that will oppress you and you will shout in the name of jesus <laughs> are you joking please i pray for you in the name of jesus that the grace to be selfless may that grace come upon you yeah. there are nurses that are not selfless is that not so in your hospital there are doctors that are not selfless a woman comes she wants to give birth and they are acting as if please madam if you would die self, just die there whereas that woman has been trusting god for a child for 12 years and you see the greed and the selflessness are you from my tribe are you from my place are you from here no selflessness i these are the things i pray for for myself these are the things that have brought blessings to my life that you show god i told you that the lord told me if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you there are many of you that desire anointing apostle anoint me and i look at you it's not even god even me i know the things you will do if that anointing really comes yeah. you will first run to your enemies and say you are finished you don't know what i'm carrying just know it's over and if you think i'm joking you you will die tomorrow you you will die on thursday by the time you kill people in a row in one week you say what this grace is powerful even me i didn't know it's this powerful listen to my message can god trust you go and listen to it please media let our family online and in diaspora listen to that message can god trust you powerful message many times it is not just in the fasting and the prayer as powerful as it is is positioning yourself god let me be your treasurer on earth the last treasurer betrayed you here is a faithful one and god is saying can i trust you say yes trust me god gives you five hundred thousand. your spirit is still sound your head is still sound and he sees how you bless people you say you did this for me let me take it to another level whereas all your prayer from your small mind is god give me five million oh god give me five five million will change my life
based on what your mind told you whereas he's thinking of giving you gold as dust and giving you the keys to the hearts of nations lord give me the grace to prophesy as soon as god gives you that grace you just say i found my stream of income i'm not wasting my time for anything again i will never prophesy free i it didn't it was not i got the anointing at a cost and god says you see your heart you were there fasting i warned you and now that you have the anointing and because it is valuable people will now begin to pay hundred thousand per prophecy thirty thousand per prophecy and the truth is that the grace will work and while you are paying and paying you are happy you are building houses collecting people's houses collecting people's cars and doing all of that god is watching you he's watching you because he knows one day you will exhaust that realm so you go back again and say lord i'm here he said, it's not me you are talking to it's not me you are talking to i gave you a grace i saw what you did with that grace lord give me the kind of apostles grace and he tests you 20 missed calls by 1 a.m you don't answer any one of them the 21st one you call and say let me tell you something i'm a human being too i sleep i this i that i hate you don't do this to me again the next time you do this. and god says look at the grace you want listen 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 please look at me selflessness is an unusual virtue that is the reason why not everybody has it why will you reward everybody when they have the same thing dr mike Murdock says that our similarities create our comfort it's our difference that creates our reward hallelujah how far can you go for the sake of people how far can you go for the sake of god some of you have vehicles you've never carried anybody after service even if it's raining you horn them and say you are going and god is watching and you already say no god i'm trusting you to give me one car that i saw on my way going somewhere and god says you think i'm stupid there are some of you even if it's on a bike or a bicycle you will never help anybody may god never give you anything that you will regret yeah. did you hear what i said may god never give you anything that you will say i feel pained that i gave this man this maybe i'll stop here Let me just talk about it the third trait you must embrace is humility i have to talk about it our time is gone but spare me two three five minutes humility humility please look at me the bible says love not the world nor the things that are in this world he says if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him then it categorizes the things we can love into three the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh number three is called the pride of life there are many people please listen to me you see ba africa hear me now i'm not just talking to zaria i'm not just talking to nigeria i'm talking to africa listen to me because of our background huh and the way we have suffered and the way people have looked down on us and some of us because of our cultural context please listen to me there is that itch to be celebrated there is that itch that urge to be perceived as great and valuable are we together and there's nothing wrong with that we call it spotlight is the slang we have for it some of you i just mentioned spotlight you're already laughing i mean you just imagine yourself there's nothing wrong with that except for the fact that pride is one thing that will make god fight a man god will not fight a man because of sin god will not fight a man even because of disobedience but pride he says that god gives opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble 
one of the one of the one of the greatest justification for pride is wealth and achievement please listen wealth and achievement every time god warned people of pride it had to do with wealth and achievement deuteronomy chapter 8 you don't have to turn there just read the bible says let it not be that when you have what built houses and done this done this and that achievement that you will say my power and the might of my hand has given me this and then verse 18 says but thou shalt remember the lord thy god for it is he it is he leave the remaining statement it is he he is the focus humility is not refusing what god has done humility is not simplicity humility is acknowledging god as the basis of every achievement that you have outspokenly in your body language and in your conversation god it is unto you apostle joshua selman the great man changing people ah a man can receive nothing precious people except it is given to him from god it's very difficult for some of you to say this thing why because you feel if i say it i'm taking away the spotlight from me pride there are many people there are many parents who would have been lifted but pride pride they will not be good examples look at me let me tell you why some of you are finding it difficult to access the blessings of god to lift you you are not going to be a good model being blessed you are the best christian model at your current state if you rise higher than that especially financially you will kill people some of you if you rise financially your mother your father your siblings and everybody they will kneel down to greet you every morning simply because you paid rent simply because you paid this i failed in life and people i think i'm a failure but now that i've succeeded i will rub it on the face of everybody no that is the way of the world we are kingdom people can you be blessed and still remain humble can you be blessed and still stoop down to people's levels can you be blessed and not disturb people with noisy of your achievements just to just to meet you and say ah um um just to let you know are you aware that i just came back from lagos and uh i flew in you came that's the most important thing whether you crawled whether you drove whether you flew avoid some of those those talks i was in the plane and ah you know i was uh, i was i don't know have you ever sat down in a business class because I'm trying to explain something I don't know if you can understand. You see, let me tell you, this is why many great people are persecuted in the church. Because we don't know how to keep quiet. Success is already loud on itself. If you dare rub it in, members all and sundry will get back at you and they will find a reason to get back at you. Let me tell you something. It is difficult to criticize a humble man even if you are right. Humility paralyzes you you what will you now say are we together i'm saying this because we are in a very prophetic season where god is lifting many of us many people are not humble they are only broke by the time the blessings of the lord comes you will see the attitude the pungency of pride pride is one thing that is a destroyer even if you kill satan and all the demons proud people will still die there is nothing that gives me beauty and glory as the world shining the light on me then i hold the light and shine it i'm proud to be the usher shining it to say people thank god for joshua selman and everything that's why you notice every time people want to celebrate me for anything i become uncomfortable when i'm preaching i can be bold i can be this if i drop this mic now and you start saying well there is a man here that thing shade was doing you see that i felt like dying if i had my way i would just send my picture to stand and represent me but some of you you like it as joking as it is some of you as you are sitting you're like, ah 
let my month come if they give me this opportunity i will first cut the cake and leave back the knife let them snap me alone before everybody comes the urge the urge the urge to outshine huh in in a in a secular business way that's all right but in a kingdom way the the urge to want to just receive vain glory please you must trust god to conquer it conquer it conquer it it's one of the big restraints that many of us may face you know many times i pray for you sincerely i do and i ask the lord i say lord continue to bless and lift my people i'm a, among the many things i get impressions of in my spirit is their tendencies god doesn't directly say pride tendencies vulnerabilities things that can happen that you are not aware of if you ever think money does not have power think again did you hear what i said think again money has power Put money in a ring with any boxer it will beat him out before he enters money is powerful anything that can turn a man around without using sword is powerful anything that can relocate a man without advice is powerful money is powerful but when it begins to come with it it will solve other problems and create others hallelujah can you let jesus be seen in your life can you be lifted that 10 million naira just entered your account and you still come for koinonia and just sit down not say if you push me if you push me if you push me please i don't have time for thieves now what happened god has blessed me you are laughing but these are the things that are enshrined in our hearts so that they will know i'm a big man so that they will know i'm rich well for your information that jeep you are seeing is my car for your information just to let you know that uh, i'll be in uk on tuesday quickly touch the us thursday and i'll try to make coin on you i'm still coming god is watching all those things it's not a testimony you are sharing there are many things that are not testimonies testimonies the goal of testimonies is edification not announcement edification so the part you stress in a testimony is the edification truly let me tell you something i vowed a vow to god and i say lord whatever you will give me that will make me proud i'm praying in advance no matter how i cry don't answer me don't answer me humility is a powerful thing can you have access and still be humble can you have increase and still stay humble are you hearing what i'm saying don't say we're like that in our family it means all of you need to hear this message it doesn't mean you are right just because everybody is like that We are like that if we have it we show it if we don't have it we don't show it but it ought not to be so jesus is teaching when you come into the kingdom you don't come with the baggages of your belief you drop it aside and adopt the value system of the kingdom there is nothing as powerful as being blessed and being humble your life is a message in action in action and it's amazing that many people what you call wealth is not wealth it's just a test 1.5 and people are in trouble 1.5 entered my account i have 1.5 million oh well now it has gone back to 1.4 i use hundred thousand and while you are talking you may believe you are impressing everybody whereas scattered among you there are accounts that if you see you will not wake up again you will not wake up I'm telling you it's not the you there are some things you act like you are used to seeing no there are things you are not used to seeing you will see things that you will not know what part of your body to react with and yet people can have those things and be quiet Moses had the ability to prophesy from morning till night the grace of the prophetic was so much in him yet Moses was quiet part of his spirit was taken out 
they called elders who had followed him 70 people received the spirit of moses nobody could keep quiet ah but thus said the lord from morning till night and moses was watching them moses said this thing that is making you make noise times 10 of it is what was in me yet i was quiet can you have so much and be quiet can you know so much and be quiet there are people if you know so much when someone is talking once is wrong let me correct you sorry that's what i studied now no that's my feel i won't keep quiet it is powerful to know so much there are times that i listen to people as they talk and many times what they are saying doesn't make a lot of sense spiritually and even intellectually i know a lot more than what they are saying but i honor them because they have more results than me i keep quiet and i just hear you understand what i'm saying i say yes sir yes sir and what the man is saying is, is is quite honestly nonsense and i just keep quiet and i listen you say ah and sometimes they are, they are flattered they are impressed because of the whole th just listen and say yes sir and keep quiet not sir with all due respect i don't want to talk quiet we're just keeping quiet but sakai this your thing is outdated no you lose many opportunities like that in the name of jesus may this ministry even with the things that god is doing bring people who are exceptionally blessed and humbled that the time will come when people will pack cars that if you want to see it you only come for koinonia and you will not even know who is who people will just be rolling rolling on the ground it's after the grace you will just see a tiny lady say let me rush home you think she's calling a bike man and she will enter a car that was your dream that you plan to buy in 30 years and you say that's the owner i said that's the owner that lady is a ceo of something he said was she not the one rolling up and down that's a message koinonia extended extended through your life don't brag around and move around making noise i have this i have that listen when you are under pressure to keep saying things it's a sign that you have complex yourself you must be healed be strengthened when god blesses you you cannot hide light we are going to pray our time is up but we must take two or three minutes to pray more than having things these are the things you must become and your life becomes exceptional lord take away my tendencies take away my vulnerabilities take away the things that can happen to me when i rise to certain levels i desire you to take me to certain levels of blessings but lord i know that there are things that are enshrined within my heart that will will limit your workings in my life if someone praying tonight lift your voice and pray tonight's teaching may be a hard teaching but pray is a maker of great people pray i owe everything to you oh god all that i am and all that i will ever become let it be unto you let the name of jesus alone be glorified alone be glorified when men see me may they see you may men not look at me and forget about you may men not look at my results and ignore jesus that when men see my life, it will remind them of who God is. Is someone praying tonight? Hallelujah. The last prayer point because of our time. Please, I want you to pray this with all your heart pray and say lord don't restrain your hand from me i am trustworthy you can trust me with the wealth of the kingdom you can trust me with access you can trust me with influence i will not bring your name i will not bring reproach to your name through the pungency of pride that will come out i will let men know no matter how you lift me i will let men know that jesus is the reason for who and what i am unashamedly consistently intentionally but lord do not withhold your hand of blessings 
in this season you are lifting men lift me do not withhold new wines from coming upon my life pray for yourself pray for koinonia let it please you oh god to trust me with everything you are pouring in this season wisdom grace lifting anointings access everything i receive it in the name of jesus hallelujah praise the lord in one minute please hold the hands of somebody close to you we are going to pray for koinonia as a ministry lord as you lift us you are giving us a voice across this nation you are giving us a voice many of you have seen the mighty things that God is doing in and through this ministry God has made our song a praise to the nations and God has so exalted himself I like you to pray pray and say Lord as you lift us we declare that never will there come a time in this ministry where men will see your workings and forget about Jesus lift your voice you love this ministry pray pray online continue the lifting oh God let the teachings continue to transform men let it enter the hands of people we declare it's a vow and a covenant that jesus and him alone will be glorified as you announce us as you lift us as you honor us in the name of jesus we decree and declare pray for everyone connected to this ministry pray for every business pray for every career pray for every achievement and every achiever pray for every business person pray for every ministry connected to this ministry pray for our children father we declare that in this season that you are announcing and lifting men jesus alone will be glorified hallelujah you know as i look at everyone here i'm just imagining i'm just imagining if god will open your eyes to see how your five years will be like how your 10 years some of you are escaping some things forever satan notwithstanding look it plays to listen to the lord are you hearing me he said Martha you are distracted and offended by many things but he said one thing everybody say one thing one thing is needful that you sit down at the master's feet he said this Mary has desired and this she has found there is a master key in life when you find it you have found it hallelujah what wisdom is this? I want to reveal to us, building from last week's message. Please, if you've not listened to last week's message, get it. Get it is very important. Hallelujah. Give me this mountain. We've been receiving testimonies. A very thought-provoking message that opens you up to the spiritual dimension of success. That lets you know that nothing just happens in this earth realm there are those who are called the elites in this earth realm those who know there are those who are the victims of the consequences and the decisions of the elite hallelujah and tonight i trust that the word of god will provoke you make sure you write please if you are here without a writing material beg your neighbor And he told John, he said, write, although he was in heaven, he said, write it, for these words are faithful and true. Write it. Hmm. A dimension of success that is bigger than science, bigger than philosophy, bigger than common sense. I want to show you a, a not a mystery, but 
I trust the Lord to equip us tonight with a higher dimension of the operation of the Spirit. See, I want you to be so full of knowledge and truth that your life, it will be programmed automatically to be successful. You can't undo it again, even if you want to do it. Hallelujah. In chemistry, there are some reactions that are called irreversible reactions. Once they happen, they have happened. This is what is happening to your life. There is an irreversible spiritual reaction. Hallelujah. You will become something. And then when you become it, those who are running helter skelter will say, but this is what we've always wanted to become. And God will say, go and join the queue. Bishop talked of a 75-year-old man who was in primary four. There are some classes in life you don't jump. Hallelujah. God designed it such that when you finish every class, a batch is given to you. So you can know who cheated. You can do expo in the university, but not in life. At the end of it, life will count your level and count the badge and say, oh God, you jump this, 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 go back. Many people will go back. The Bible says, is the thief that follows through the window. Is that in your Bible? Hustling can help you jump through the window. Is that true? But life will bring you back, I tell you. May it not happen when you have children because they will go back too with you. And as you are moving, they will be saying, Daddy, why? Lamentations 3.27 It is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. It is good that a man bear his yoke the Bible says the glory of the young man is his strength. Now that you are young, you can pray. Now that you are young, you can press. He said, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. For the night cometh when no man can walk again. He said, in the days of Samuel, when the word of the Lord was cast. May you be the light when darkness comes upon men. And that light will make kings to come to your rising. Gentiles and kings to the brightness of your rising. Like Sheba, they will come with their goods to reward your sacrifices of today. And Sheba heard of the wisdom of Solomon. It was so notable. She had to sail by sea and come to test him the entire kings of the earth came together solomon is the biblical portrait of wisdom i pray that this dimension of wisdom will fall upon somebody this night Amen. hallelujah thank you jesus Let's write a few things. What does it mean to be successful in the kingdom? It's important that we understand the biblical concept of success. I want to define success by God's standards because there are many standards that have been presented to many people including believers and many of us have received wrong perspectives of what we call success but we trust God for grace to reorder a lot of things say after me I received this dimension of wisdom say one more time I received this dimension of wisdom hmm. Grant us this wisdom, O oh God. Grant us this wisdom. I'll give you two definitions. The definition of success in the kingdom. Number one, it means to grow in the knowledge of God and in conformity to his nature and principles. The first parameter to gauge and define success in the kingdom is not a car 
not a house, not jeep. Wrong parameters. In Jeremiah 9.23, he says that let the wise man not glory in his wisdom. Let the strong man not glory in his strength. Hallelujah. He said, but let him that glory at glory in this, that he knoweth and understandeth me. The knowledge of God to the degree to which you know God and you have allowed your life to conform to his nature and his principles. You are considered to be successful from the perspective of the kingdom. So number one, growing in the knowledge of God. The Bible says, grow in grace and in the knowledge of God. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of God. Paul was speaking to the church. He said, my little children in whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. Until the nature, the character, the formation of Christ. So that you become a visible manifestation just like Jesus. The Bible says, in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In other words, he was the physical expression of whatever you think God is. Hallelujah. Number two. It means to experience the blessings of God. In every area of life. It's not enough to know God. It means to experience. Look at me. The Bible says creation is waiting for the manifestation. Not the explanation of the sons of God. There are many people who can explain success. But there are very few people who will ever experience it in this life. The world is not waiting for explanations. They are waiting for the manifestation. Hallelujah. So success in the kingdom means to experience the blessings of God. In how many areas? Success is not just about money and finance. No. Your health. Your family. Your relationships. It means to experience the blessing of God. Everybody say the blessing of God. In your career, in ministry, in whatever area of your life. That your life will be an example. A portrait. There are certain people in scripture that represented the portrait of certain things. The biblical portrait of a blessed man is Abraham. The biblical portrait of wisdom is Solomon. The biblical portrait of the prophetic is Elijah. The biblical portrait of the law is Moses. Hallelujah. The biblical portrait of love is John. The biblical portrait of faith is Peter. And so on and so forth. May you be a portrait that represents something to the body of Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, kingdom definition of success. We're talking about wisdom. So I want to get it straight with us so that we know what we are not talking about tonight. Number three, it means to accomplish your life goals and your God-given assignment. Success in the kingdom means you accomplish your life goals. You accomplish your God-given assignment. He said, my meat, in other words, this is what gives me satisfaction. To do and to finish the will of him that has sent me. He said, lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will. Jeremiah chapter 1, he said, before I formed you, I knew you, I called you, I ordained you to be a prophet. It means to accomplish your goals in life. To do and finish your God-given assignment. One more, number four. It means to be a blessing to mankind. Success, according to the kingdom definition, means to be a blessing to mankind. Both believers and unbelievers. The Bible says he gives rain. 
both to the godly and ungodly when your life becomes a reference point both to believers and unbelievers you are successful he said let your light so shine before men not christians before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven the bible says we are his workmanship created in christ jesus that we may do that which we have been for ordained for hallelujah are you blessed write this word down exploits this is our year of supernatural exploits by the grace of god exploits it means unusual uncommon extraordinary accomplishment unusual uncommon extraordinary accomplishment Hallelujah. Let me give you the definition of wisdom. You're ready? Number one, this is the general definition of wisdom as we know. That wisdom is the accurate application of knowledge this is the general definition of wisdom wisdom is the accurate application of knowledge when knowledge is applied or information is applied accurately we call that wisdom Are you there? Accurate application of knowledge. But you see, the wisdom I'm talking about tonight is not just the one that fits this definition. It's a higher realm. Mark 6. Mark 6. Let's examine this kind, this type and this dimension. Mark 6. Say after me, I received this wisdom. Are you there? Mark 6 verse 1. Let's hurry up. And he went out from there and came into his own country. And his disciples followed him. Verse 2. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. He said, and many hearing him were what? astonished saying from where had this man these things he said and what wisdom is this which is given unto him and through that wisdom what happens he said that even such mighty works i'm talking about the kind of wisdom that will grant you access to command exploits beyond the realm of this earth this is not the kind of wisdom you find around the bible says jesus walked in that level of wisdom and when he began to talk they asked him they said from where where is this man coming from and what wisdom is this everybody say what wisdom is this so let's define the dimension of wisdom we are talking about this wisdom is the supernatural ability the supernatural ability to use the inspired and the written word of god to solve life's problems and make accurate decisions 
the supernatural ability to use the word of God both written and inspired to solve the problems of life and to make accurate decisions. This is the dimension of wisdom that the ancients used in the Bible and they commanded exploits. The ability to use the word of God and all the inspirations that come from the Holy Spirit to give it applicable value here in the earth realm and command results with it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's examine a few kinds of wisdom that we have. James 3. I want to take this carefully tonight because I want everybody to understand this. I want us to get it. The Bible took time to talk about this dimension of wisdom. In the book of Proverbs, wisdom even cries. Wondering why people are not interested in her pursuit. And it says wisdom is the principal thing. Let's look at James 3. We read from verse 13 to 17. But the verse of emphasis is verse 15. From verse 13. It says, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good life his works with meekness and wisdom. Verse 14. But if he have bitter envy and strife in your heart, that means there are some levels of wisdom that only produce this. Glory not and lie not against the truth. Verse 15. Are you ready? It says, this wisdom descended not from above. So we see the first kind of wisdom. This is the one we are talking about. The wisdom that comes from above. Hallelujah. The apostle is contracting, is, is contrasting a wisdom that comes from above with other kinds of wisdom. Number one, the wisdom that comes from above. This one is given by God alone. You don't read for it. You can't search it out. Let's continue. Number two, he said, but it's earthly. So we have earthly wisdom, human wisdom, what we call common sense. The ability to know that if you touch fire, it will burn you. The ability to know that you cannot sit down on water ordinarily. Earthly wisdom, Sophia. Hallelujah. Number three, sensual wisdom. This is the wisdom that you get through study, scientific wisdom, philosophical wisdom. Hmm. Wisdom that comes through studies. Hallelujah. That's the kind of wisdom that makes all of the things that we have that help us relate with our environment. And then the fourth kind of wisdom. The Bible calls it devilish or demonical wisdom. This is the wisdom that is gotten from the underworld. This is the wisdom that you get by your alliance and your allegiance with Satan. This is the wisdom that was used to build Egypt. A type of Babylon. It was the wisdom that Pharaoh and the Egyptians used. And they accomplished supernatural, extraordinary things. But hear what the Bible says. Verse 17. This is the wisdom we are considering tonight. He said, but the wisdom that is from above. Come on now. Where is it from? It's not from the earth realm. I will show you that you cannot find it. It does not have a physical location in the earth realm. It's first pure. Peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. 
this is the wisdom we are talking about this dimension of wisdom that cannot be gotten in this earth realm wisdom from above above and beyond anything that you know everybody say I receive that wisdom hallelujah there is this dimension of wisdom and there are men and women who are walking in this level of wisdom today Solomon in scripture the Bible says that Solomon had an interaction with God and he was given this wisdom and the reign of Israel during the dispensation of Solomon as theologians tell us is the closest to the biblical portrait of what the millennial reign looks like there was no war hallelujah Solomon became king and he brought rest and abundance to the nation of Israel no war during his time there was peace and tranquility by this wisdom and tonight I pray that we will find it we will find it so that you and some of your family members will rest forever I pray for you that you will find it there are some things that when you find they become life they exempt you forever hallelujah Job 28 how do we access this wisdom this supernatural ability that is not just found lying around this wisdom that defies scientific wisdom wisdom that is bigger than studies wisdom that is bigger than age age does not give this kind of wisdom this is the wisdom that when they gathered around with job many people were speaking out of different wisdom earthly wisdom sensual wisdom and early who said uh -uh. he said i was young and you people were old so i thought to keep quiet he said i thought that experience should teach wisdom but there is a spirit in man any kind of man hallelujah solomon was a very young boy when he began to lead the nation of israel 12 years of age but he became a king with this mighty wisdom and he ruled for 40 years 12 years how old are you those who celebrated their birthdays how old are you but a 12 year old boy confused and perplexed you see why he asked god for wisdom what will you expect a 12 year old boy to ask wife husband he said oh lord i'm but a small boy and god said don't worry there is a kind of wisdom that when it comes upon you you will produce exploits for 40 years hallelujah job 28 for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom i choose the way of the lord for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom i choose the way it's a long reading let me read this is job the bible calls job the richest blessed blessed man in the east he was a great man when the elders saw him they stood up the young men saw him and they bowed their face they could not look at him what dimension of wisdom brought him to that level of success read with me 28 surely there is a vein for silver that means where silver is mine has been found by men is that true and a place for gold where they refine it iron is taken out of the earth and bronze is melted out of stone he set an end to darkness and searched out all perfection the stones of darkness and the shadows of death listen 
Verse 6, he said, the stones of it are the place of sapphires. And it had the dust of gold. It's trying to tell you what the wisdom, the philosophical wisdom of men have been able to accomplish. He said, through that wisdom, they have even been able to find where gold and silver is hidden. They can come here and not need to dig down to the earth to tell you whether there is gold or silver. That's a measure of wisdom. Hallelujah. But verse 7 says, There is a part which no fowl knoweth. Birds fly in the air. They see things that men cannot see. But he said there is a part that even the eyes of the bird cannot reach. No matter what plane it stands to search it out, it cannot see it. He said, and the falcon's eye has not seen it. The lion's whelps, the lion that does not fear any animal, it is not restricted. But he said, even the lion has not been able to discern that place. He put forth his hand upon a rock and overturned the mountain by its roots. He cutted out rivers among the rock and his eyes see every precious thing. He binded the floods from overflowing and the thing that is hidden bringeth forth it to light. Verse 12, are you there? Here's the question. But where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? This is a question. With all the excavations that happen, there are cranes today that build all kinds of towers in the earth. Man has been able to stretch and explore wisdom. There are houses that have been built inside the sea. There are bridges that they build across seas. But the Bible says, where is this very wisdom? That with all the advancement of science, men have not found it. Let's fast for the location of this wisdom. 13. He said, man knoweth not its price. Neither is it found where? In the land of the living. In other words, it is not in this earth realm. You cannot find it here. No matter how intelligent you are, this is the wisdom that is above and beyond this earth realm. The depth. Where is the depth? The deep places. The places of the occult. The places where they do all kinds of things. That even the occultic realm has this to say. It is not with me. And the sea said it is not with me. That's why even wealthy people in the earth realm have not been able to find this wisdom. And the recession that is coming will prove it. That although the, the sea represents the abundance of people. Because the Bible says I will give you the abundance of the sea. He said even the sea, those who have worked in abundance. Who claim they have found the wisdom. All of the people that Forbes magazine is listing. The Bible says they have not found it. And time will show that what they had was not wisdom. There was famine in Samaria to an extent that people did not have any resource. They finished eating animals. They ate plants and grasses. It was remaining only human beings. And mother said, let's start eating our children. Where were the philosophers and the, the intelligent people? There will be a replay of that. Yeah. The Bible says it in Malachi 4 that the earth will burn with an oven and all those who do wickedly will be embarrassed. Let me tell you the truth. If you do not access this wisdom, whatever else you have are just shadows. Are you getting blessed tonight? The Bible says, 15, it cannot be gotten for gold. That means you don't buy this wisdom with money. If you could buy it with money, the wicked wealthy men, including the Illuminati, they will buy everything and be the custodians of it. But the Bible says, this one, even gold, cannot buy it. You can't buy it. It's not the personal possession of any man. It cannot be weighed for silver. It is not valued with the gold of Ophir and the precious onyx and the sapphire. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it. 
and the exchange of it is not for the jewels of gold no mention shall be made of coral or of pearl or the price of wisdom is above rubies it says the topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it neither shall it be valued with your gold 20 whence then cometh wisdom where is this wisdom that everything that men value today cannot buy it this is what solomon saw and when he got it every other thing that could not buy it followed him come on now i give you a master key the bible says that wisdom is the principal thing listen to the word of god when he speaks because they are life to those who find them many people will not listen this is the problem pastor it's not just the hearers there are some of you looking at me and you are saying is this thing really important it will be important when all else fail in your life my son the bible says pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings do not let them depart from your heart keep them in the midst of your heart they are life to those who find I show you a way, a way of escape out of the nonsense that many people live forever. There are people perpetually forever. There are some who have enslaved their generations forever. One of it is America. 17 trillion US dollars in debt. Increasing by an average of 12 billion dollars every day. How many generations will pay it? They are the ones we call the wise. They are the ones who are trying to follow. The Bible says they can't buy this wisdom. Are you hearing me? With all the wisdom of the military and the wisdom of governments, they've not been able to stop war. But a 12-year-old boy came with this wisdom and for 40 years, there was peace in the nation. Where is this wisdom? My God, I pray that somebody will get this wisdom. Solomon with this wisdom made silver like the dust. Silver like the dust. If you find silver outside, you are traveling to Kano first thing tomorrow morning to go and sell it first thing. But a time came, people saw it and they just left it. My God, I received that dimension of wisdom. I receive it. Let's finish up. Seeing it is hidden from the eyes of all living and kept close from the fowls of the air. Abaddon, the place of the dead, and death say, We have heard its fame with our ears. God understandeth his way. This is the secret. He said, With all this confusion that men are having, God is saying, I know where it is. I know where it is because I kept it. And I know the place of it. Where is this wisdom? How can you access this wisdom? With this wisdom, Daniel entered a strange land. And he ruled through the dispensation of three different kings. The same result. The same result through the dispensation of three different kings hallelujah praise the lord this dimension of wisdom we're talking about accessing this wisdom now this dimension of wisdom only comes from god the first thing i want you to know about this wisdom in and in accessing it is that it is given everybody say it is given god gives men you don't study it you don't look for it it's a waste of time god gives men hallelujah when you meet his conditions he will give it to you god gives men ready let me write the conditions for you the conditions for accessing this dimension of wisdom number one you must have a passionate love for god and his agenda the bible says i has not seen nor ear heard neither has it come into the heart of man 
what God has prepared for them that love him, not them that speak in tongues. Not them that attend koinonia. Eye has not seen. Ear has not heard. What God has in store. For who? Them that love him. We are going to examine Solomon's life very quickly before we pray. Because he's the biblical portrait. Let me teach you something. Every time you are searching out for something in life, stop confusing yourself. Go back to the word and look for those who were biblical portraits of that thing you are looking for. The Bible says, look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah that bear thee. He said, I called him alone and I blessed him. That means as far as God is concerned, when you are talking about blessings and prosperity, Abraham is God's portrait of a blessed man. Not Bill Gates, not Warren Buffett, not Carlos Limas Hilu, not all of those great men. Thank God for them. But he said, look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah that bear thee. When it comes to wisdom, it was given to Solomon. There are many people that operated that dimension of wisdom. Daniel, different people. But we are going to examine the life of Solomon. Let's look at his life quickly. Conditions for, for, for accessing that wisdom. Number one, passionate love for God. First Kings chapter 3. I prayed my heart out and I said, Lord, let your people find wisdom. May they find wisdom. Many of you will thank God for these teachings years to come. Are you there? First Kings 3. Let's examine the life of this biblical figure that was able to access this level of wisdom. The first thing the Bible has to say about Solomon in chapter 3 verse 3 is that and Solomon loved the Lord. Everybody say Solomon loved the Lord. And Solomon did what? The Bible didn't say and Solomon served the Lord. Solomon loved the Lord. See, let me tell you, your love and passion for God is the number one thing he's searching for even beyond your service. There are many people who serve God, but they do not love God. They don't have that passionate love. They are only serving God because of formality or because of their environment. You are in a family where everybody is a Christian. So you have to go to church. You have to come for koinonia. He said, and Solomon did what? Love the Lord. That means every other thing that he did was because of that love. A man can serve God because of wife. I hope you know that. A man can serve God because of husband. A man can serve God because of the whiplash of employment. And you just find the nearest church and say, Ah, let me find refuge in this place. And rest before I find out what is going on. People can serve God for various reasons. For car, for house, for prosperity, for job. He said, but Solomon loved the Lord. Do you love the Lord? The first condition for accessing this wisdom. This is why the kings of the earth cannot get it. Because they do not love the Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. It's from the bottom of my heart. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. It's from the bottom of my heart. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. From the bottom of my heart. See, when you give God your heart not your hands not your tears when you give God your heart I'm giving you a big secret many Nigerians do not love God many pastors do not love God they love ministry they love suits they want ministry advancement but they do not love the Lord many leaders in this country do not love the Lord many young people Hustlers who keep hustling forever, they don't love the Lord. Many fathers, many mothers do not love the Lord. And we wonder why his blessings and his wisdom is far from us. Some of you here looking at me don't love the Lord. You love the house of God. You love the people of God. You love Christian music, but you don't love the Lord. And Solomon 
loved the Lord. And Solomon loved the Lord. Can that be your testimony? That will say, ah, and Eben loved the Lord. And Paul Maman loved the Lord. Some of you, as you say, and you love the Lord, your spirit will tell you no way. You say, and you are now willing to love the Lord. Not that you love the Lord. I keep emphasizing this passion for God because if you are not rooted in love success will make you run away from God are you hearing me success will make you do what let me tell you if you enter real success it's a double-edged sword it can kill you are you hearing what I'm saying there are levels the, the problem is many people in nigeria are so poor and unsuccessful it cannot even cross their mind what true success looks like and solomon loved the lord that's the first condition number two you must have a sincere desire to be a blessing you want to access this wisdom you must have what a sincere desire to be a blessing same first kings 3 from verse 8 and 9 god gave solomon an open check he says solomon what do you want me to give you look up if solomon was a nigerian and god says solomon what do you want me to give you his first question will be is he only me will there be any other person with it say no only you he say ha god you better carry paper and buy room. let me empty my whole life let me tell you what i want the first thing is any day anybody speaks against me let him die one two all the people that have called me a failure prove a point to them is that not true number three make those people serve me so that forever it will remind them let me tell you hear me if that is your desire i assure you it is not god's wisdom you will never get in life you can get any other thing but you can't get god's wisdom that way the bible says indeed genesis 12 verse 2 shall all the families of the earth be blessed there are many people who who, who jump in church oh i'm a millionaire i tell them you can get it by by working for 50 years but i assure you if it is through the wisdom of god your heart must be ready to be a blessing otherwise you cannot access this wisdom do you know how many self-centered selfish people we have in this world some of you are saying me i'm not selfish how much have you held that you know whether you are selfish or not solomon had the opportunity to say lord me and my wife and all the people bless me hear what he said verse 8 he said and thy servant is in the midst of thy people 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 when you love god truly you will love people many pastors preach day and night to congregations they don't love they are just trying to use the congregations to show they are making progress in ministry i told god if you never bless me in this life if I never become successful in this life, I may do many things, but not loving you is not one of them. He has my heart. Believe me. I've crossed a bridge and burnt it that I'll never return again. When you see God blessing certain people, check their heart. I heard Bishop Oyedeko shout this thing. He said, you want to know the secret of my blessing? And the blessing of this ministry check my heart beat for God there are many of you if God says between 12 this night and 1 anything you pray anything you ask me I will give you I mean Jesus appears to you the first thing is you wipe sleep from your eyes and stand and mention the name of all your loved ones and mention everything till 5 minutes to 1 you will sit down and say, Lord, I'm still thinking. Okay, I remember. Do this for me, for me, for me. I trust God that 
in the years to come in koinonia our testimony will not just be god gave me tea god gave me bread god gave me handkerchief but that god used me to do this for somebody else it is at that point we will clap right now we are clapping for god change me and we thank you for it god did this a millionaire is not one who has one million a millionaire is one who has become a blessing to people with up to one million oh god i want this i want fame i want power give me this church oh god i'm tired of wearing suit that tailor sold i want to wear the one that i'm buying up oh god change my story and god is saying for you or for me or for my kingdom god said would this when we get to that bridge have you had people say that he said when we get there we'll cross it you better god can see your heart everybody say i love the lord and i desire to be a blessing see can i tell you if you are looking for success for yourself you don't need much effort you know but you know that how many clothes can you wear how many books can you write but when your heart is set for the kingdom of God, then you are, you are not ready for the avalanche of exploits that you will do. There are many people who want anointing. Some people come to me, they just say, oh, man of God. These are Buddha people again. They come, oh, man of God, my ministry, we've not been experiencing the hand of God. And I've, I, I trust God for the oil of your life. As if I'm selling it. Say, man of God, I believe if you touch me, there will be an explosion. And I'm saying, look at this guy. From the way he's talking, from the way he's talking, this guy is going to yoke and kill the sheep. There are many people who want to go on air. Oh God, take me on air. God say, you, for, because of the way I love you, you won't cross this realm of ministry. When you see God not blessing some people, don't be too quick to beg on their behalf. Ask God why first. Some of our fathers have prayed. We have done Bible studies. We brought prophet, priest, king. We brought everybody to our houses. Change our story, oh God. Say, amen. God said, no way. You are the one shouting amen there. Yeah. I have seen your heart. Are you ready to be a blessing? I'm telling you a secret. It does not cause God to change your family. Or your situation but can he have your heart are you ready to truly be a blessing can you sit down today and see a family come and they love god and you just look and the lord say build a build a three bedroom flat for them and don't announce it build it put everything and come and tell them this was why god blessed me you say if i do this to you here's the condition it must be on newspaper it must be on cnn all of you must come and kneel down and say thank you and i will give you the key in front of everybody that way they will now know that i'm serving the lord it doesn't work that way how many of you are ready to be blessed how many of you know that if, if you are successful today you will give scholarships you will build orphanages you will build churches let me tell you the truth many of you are lying because you've never done anything with the ten thousand you have even your tight, you have not been faithful. You just saw 1,000. Hey! 1,000. You can buy palm oil, you can buy salt. Magi one tier. Garif is the half one, self it will reach. Number three. So number one, a passion for God and his agenda. Number two, a sincere desire to be a blessing. Say I'm a blessing. I'm a blessing. Say I refuse to be a consumer. Say it. I refuse to be a consumer. I'm not that man praying for God to bless others. Have you had that kind of nonsense, satanic, anti-God's agenda prayer? Where they say, may God bless you. Oh, as you bless, please our pocket is open. Drop it for us. What kind of cause is that? There are people in life who are waiting. That's, that's their prayer. Oh God, bless this guy. He has already gone far. Just finish with him for my sake. Because we hate paying the price. Say, God, please. The way, the way Tokumbo is going now, 
Lord, I thank you. Keep blessing him. I say, TK, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. The prayer I would have done for myself, I'm doing for you. Don't forget me. No, no. You must desire to be a blessing. Because you see, how can you pay so much price just to bless others? Does it look fair? It's not, it's not the attitude of natural men. When you suffer alone, what happens? You chop alone. That's what they've taught us in Nigeria. Pastor, <laughs> they can't die alone. Hallelujah. That's the language of Nigerians. I suffered alone. Were you there when I was suffering? Say no. So now it's my turn to chop. I don't know you. I don't know your name. We have never met. Say Fatima, say Fatima, me, I don't know you. I've never seen you. If your heart is not said to be a blessing, I am telling you, I'm not just talking of money. You will never really get anything. Hallelujah. A sincere desire to be a blessing. Number three, to access this wisdom, you need to operate the law of giving. First Kings 3 verse 4. That's what we see in the life of Solomon. Everybody say the law of giving. Any day I talk about the law of giving, don't be confused. Let me tell you straight to the point what I'm talking about. The law of giving is number one, your tithe. Whenever I talk of the law of giving, it's not some unambiguous thing. Number one, your tithe. Malachi chapter 3 from verse 20 to 12. Let me tell you something. I don't care any other giving you give. Even if you give one billion for any project, if your tithe does not precede your giving life, you only wasted your time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your tithe is your number one obligation in the law of giving. Please listen to me. I pray that God will make many of you see that this is not some scheme by men of God. To collect money from you because if that is it you you will never be successful this is not about money it's about maintaining an open heavens the bible says bring ye all your tithe into my storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now here which saith the lord if i will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. He said, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. He shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast its young. And he says, you will be a delight some land and you will be blessed. Seven prophetic blessings that follow a tithe. Many people think tithe is all about money. Tithe is about giving God first place in your life. Hallelujah. Oh, how much? It's just 5,000. Even God understands. Oh, my father gave his tithe for me. All these flimsy excuses will keep you a failure in life. Say, I receive grace to tithe. Be consistent. I have envelopes, envelopes in my house. Anything that comes in, I've told you this is the secret of the blessings of ENI. It's not a mystery. The finance department are on perpetual instruction. I don't care money for what is raised in this place. Before we touch one naira or one dollar or one pound, one whatever it is, the tithe is taken first. When we started the school of ministry, the same thing. The tithe, as I speak to you right now, the tithe for the collection of this night is already set. There were many trees in the garden of eden but god kept the tithe and told man don't touch it every time you take what god did not give you he will return back with something he will collect some something that he had given you say amen every time some of you you take the tithe what happens he will drive you out of the garden hallelujah could this be the reason why some of you may never go far in life You take 10,000. You say, Lord, in my heart I've given you. But right now, let me just use this quickly. Let me just buy Panadol. I promise you. There's 120,000 coming on Wednesday. When it comes, I will add it. These are gimmicks by Satan to kill you. Some of you, 
you you in your mind you even have it in a pen your tithe from march to now that you plan to give god but you have not yet given he said god you look at the heart number two your kingdom investments i'm talking of your offerings i'm talking of your seeds that are sown in the house of god if you have a business tight you have a church tight you have anything tight tight and you and open heavens so your kingdom investments and then giving to god servants prophet offerings and giving to the needy these are the things that constitute the law of giving the bible says in first kings 3 verse 4 it says solomon offered a thousand everyone say one thousand bond offerings say one thousand look up we are not up to one thousand in this place do you know what it means to see a field as big as football field and you just stand from somewhere and see them dragging animals 800 801 802 870 900 950 991 to 1000 and then they cut all of them you just see blood spilling around what waste what waste and god saw a man doing this while solomon got to the 900 one he said lord steal for you he got to 991 he said lord for you and he killed the 1000 and god said no way god himself had to come down and say solomon you have touched me you have touched me in what do you want come on now there are some sacrifices that will compel the presence of god hallelujah in my little life i've had the opportunity to do some dangerous givings i've told you god does not love a cheerful giver alone god also loves a crying giver there is he that weepeth and bearing precious seeds there is he that weepeth there are some givings that you don't just give laughing you will give and cry you will give and call yourself a fool after the service how be it your faithfulness will endure finally under accessing this wisdom ask of the lord first kings 3 verse 9 solomon acts of the lord solomon acts of the lord for an understanding heart james 1 verse 5 the bible says does any man lack wisdom let him ask of the lord let him ask of the lord tonight we are going to be asking i told you this wisdom see this wisdom comes to you from god it's an impartation solomon discusses with god in the night in a dream the next day he wakes up and he starts judging with that wisdom immediately immediately daniel daniel i'm going we're going to consider that scripture quickly before we pray daniel when the king had a dream could not interpret it he said let's just rest he rested that night that wisdom worked this is not the kind of wisdom that will happen over time uh -uh. when it comes on you it speaks at once hallelujah finally before we pray let's consider the workings of this dimension of wisdom the operation how does it work i've told you what it is i've told you how to access it shiva kapra takete balada bakasi how does this wisdom work proverbs 18 verse 1 the first way is the sacrifice of meditation this is how this this is the first way this wisdom begins to find expression what did i say the sacrifice of meditation proverbs 18 verse 1 the bible says true desire a man having separated himself seek it and intermeddle it with all wisdom meditation meditation many of us do not understand the power of meditation when you set aside time and you sit alone and you begin to allow the holy spirit 
to find expression and then that wisdom begins to find expression meditation Daniel chapter 2 from verse 14 to 6 please let's look at it quickly I want to show you a very sound warning and impart wisdom for some of us Daniel 2 I cried for many years to the Lord I said Lord give me wisdom give me wisdom Daniel 2 from verse 14 are you there say amen let's read it quickly verse 14 then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard who was gone for to slay the wise men of Babylon they could not interpret the king's dream look at this wicked king you had your dream and you forgot and you were angry just like many people in Nigeria they blame people for their failed dreams they wanted to be great it didn't happen and now they are angry at everybody listen Daniel said this in verse 15 and he answered and said unto Ariok the king's captain why is the decree so hasty from the king then Ariok made the thing known to Daniel 16 listen he said then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he should give him that he should give him this is what has killed a lot of people in our generation we are in a rush for everything that's why the spirit of wisdom the touch of wisdom is not upon our lives we're in a hurry to make money a hurry to do everything a hurry to get that job a hurry to do everything in life and so we don't consult with God we don't pray we don't have time to meditate to allow the wisdom of God to edit our lives the Bible says many are the counsel that are in a man's heart however it's a many are the purposes in a man's heart however the counsel of the Lord that shall stand we never do anything as in, in a minister let me tell you something anybody that comes to meet you with anything in life in a rush run away quickly did you hear me run away quickly Daniel said uh -uh, king you are rushing this thing too much he said give me time if you give me time I will meditate and the Lord will reveal to me and I will tell you let me show you another scripture we'll soon get up and pray are you there Zupa kata paria kata basham brati kata. Verse nineteen. He said, "Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision, when he he had time, and he went in the night, meditating upon this thing, and during the night time, not the night moment, the night time, this thing was revealed to him." every time you take time see there is nothing that should compel your excessive hurrying in life because your hurrying in life will produce casualties that when you get to that place it will hurt you and those who have been walking slowly will come and pass you you see somebody running and is running on 200 and somebody is running on 120 the next thing they are bringing the mirror out of the bush and the man is sitting on the blood on the ground with blood and somebody who was going on 120 will come and pass and say sorry what was the rush for especially for some of us who are men make sure you think through don't make stupid decisions no matter how much you think you know the answer there is a way that cement right onto a man but see great leaders are not men of hasty decisions they think through no matter what the urgency is learn this is a big secret in life daniel said tell the king to give us time and this wisdom will work hallelujah the sacrifice of meditation everybody say i receive grace to meditate 
Some of the things you see today are the things that we get by meditation. This is how I get the messages for the week. I spend time, I pray, and I just sit in his presence. Kapo Shatamaya. And allow this wisdom that cannot be found in the land of men. When that wisdom comes, you know accurately what it is that God wants you to do. Hallelujah. Number two, this wisdom manifests when you begin to speak or make decisions. It's supernatural. It's supernatural. It's not wisdom that is rehearsed. All of you, some of please look at me look at me let me show you that some of you have already been working in this thing how many of you have had someone come to counsel you i mean somebody come for you to counsel the person and you know that you are not married yet you are talking to couples about something there is no way you would have known you did rehearse it you did rehearse what to tell them this is that wisdom it's like you are prophesying somebody will ask you a question and you begin to speak you are talking and for hours at the end of it you wish you recorded your message because you know you can't find it again this is that dimension of wisdom are you listening to me somebody say i received that wisdom luke 21 verse 15 if you can project it using the amplified version but let's just look at it luke 21 quickly somebody will access this wisdom tonight in the name of jesus somebody will access this wisdom tonight in the mighty name of jesus luke 21 verse 15 it said for i will give you a mouth and wisdom which your adversaries shall not be able to resist nor gain say listen listen this wisdom begins to manifest when you are speaking. It's not something that you have that you say, I have it. I can. No, the moment you open your mouth, you will begin to utter things that are not of this realm. Hallelujah. And so you go to your office and they are deliberating on a decision. And many people are just bringing foolish theories that are not applicable. And you keep quiet like Elihu. Suddenly you will open your mouth. He said, open your mouth and I will feel it. He didn't say, I'll open your mouth when I feel it. Open your mouth and I will feel it. Suddenly you begin to communicate wisdom. And they look at you. My father calls me a young man with gray hair. Ah, there is a dimension of wisdom. That when you speak, people will look at you and say, no, this cannot be wisdom that is accumulated by experience. This is an impartation of this dimension of wisdom. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that from today as you open your mouth to speak, you will speak that order and that operation of wisdom. Many of you have used your mouth to close the doors of your destiny because what came out was foolishness, not wisdom. Our word came out was just scientific knowledge. I pray for someone tonight. I pray for someone tonight. May God make that when you meet your destiny helper, the right words that will be upon your lips, that will compel men. There are many people today moving around with business proposals. And they know what books say they should say. But the Bible says, I will give you a wisdom and a mouthpiece. Could this be what you need to tell your project supervisor for him to let you go with your work? Could this be that this is what you need to tell somebody to help you with capital for your business? Could it be that this is what you need to tell somebody to employ your loved ones? Let the opening of our lips utter wisdom that is beyond this realm so that you will be noted for that wisdom. Matthew chapter 10 verse 19 to 20 we are running Matthew chapter 10 I feel the power of God in this place we are going to pray this this wisdom must hit somebody this night this wisdom must hit somebody this night someone must write it in your jota that on this day 
you encounter the dimension of wisdom that cannot be found in the land of the living verse 19 matthew 10 verse 19 but when they deliver you up that means when you are in trouble he said do not be anxious how or what you shall speak for it shall be given you in the same hour he said it shall be given to you when that means when you stand even if you don't know what to say some of you when they invite you to preach you are shaking you are saying oh god what will i say hold on hold that mic now with that spirit of wisdom and you will be amazed at the utterances that will come out of your lips verse 20 he said for it is not you that speak but the spirit of your father that does what speaks in you so although you have seen a man what is really happening is the spirit of god speaking to a man that's why you weigh the man and weigh the wisdom that is coming and say what wisdom is this i pray that in years to come this will be the testimony that they will produce a documentary on some of you and name it what wisdom is this you will do things that defy the wisdom of men that the world will celebrate you for it solomon operated in this dimension of wisdom there were two women who came two harlots one slept on a child and by that wisdom he deciphered accurately and the bible says his fame was spread abroad there is a level of wisdom that will ripple across territories people will share it let me tell you something people have mouths that can talk they can as well talk about your wisdom and say when it comes to brother so and so no this is a this this guy operates in a class of wisdom that is not known to men doth not wisdom cry doth not wisdom cry look at how solomon cried with this thing in the book of proverbs solomon said wisdom is begging people wisdom stands on the street and see many people looking for success Doth not wisdom cry wisdom was crying and said pay attention to me with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches but people will not listen the third way this wisdom manifests is through innovative and inspired ideas inspired thoughts job 32 verse 8 but there is a spirit in man and that spirit can bring inspiration everybody say inspiration that dimension of wisdom how did they build the tabernacle in the wilderness look at me they were in the wilderness there was no source of help but they got wisdom from god and they built the tabernacle in the wilderness brothers and sisters i can kneel down and beg you tonight do not trivialize the power of what i'm telling you there are some messages until you get to certain realms it may not be useful but when you get to that realms you can never be a leader without this you will waste your time there are many frustrated men of god who have power but don't have wisdom it takes wisdom it takes wisdom to be a leader it takes wisdom to be a father it doesn't take age it takes wisdom it takes wisdom to command prosperity it doesn't take years of time it takes this wisdom lastly dreams and visions daniel chapter 2 from verse 19 to 23 the bible says and the secret of the lord that secret was revealed to daniel in the vision of the night how many times have i laid down to sleep and in the visions of the night god opens things to me that cannot be found in this realm that's how some of these messages come see can i tell you something 
some of these great men like Don Muen and the rest the reason why some of their songs are timeless is because they came by this wisdom it is this wisdom that transported it there are others whose songs just came from musical argument so it will change as time changes but there are others it comes with a spirit the wisdom of god comes from the realm of eternity that's why some of these messages are timeless even after 30 years they will still be relevant because they come by the wisdom of god there are some messages that have gone extinct as the church of god is growing they pack them and throw them away but there are certain fathers of faith who have gone to be with the lord but their messages are timeless because they were a byproduct of this wisdom get wisdom get understanding he said exalt and she shall promote you Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 it says God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us so he spake to us in sundry times and in diverse manners communicates his wisdom to us an idea that people will be dying for in the night see do you know that Solomon received his wisdom in a dream if he had a roommate, the roommate will never know that something has happened. You just wake up in the morning. Come on now. Not the same person who slept. I pray that someone will sleep in the night as an ordinary person and wake up in the morning with an order of wisdom. I cried to God years in my life. I said, Lord, I want you to give me this wisdom. This message I'm preaching to you tonight is an old message. It's an old message. I'm preaching to you my experience. I found this thing. And I said, come on, Lord. A 12-year-old boy? Lord, I'm available. Give me wisdom that is bigger than my level in life. Give me wisdom that is bigger than my experience. Give me wisdom that is bigger than everything I know. That wisdom will take you to a place where everybody around you is an elder except you. Yet they will give you a seat among the great. There are some of you, this wisdom will make, if you ever see your colleagues, it's just because you want to discuss with them. But as far as success is concerned, uh -uh, it will take you to a realm. Everybody is far older than you. They will say, how did you come this fast? It takes men years to do this exploits by this dimension of wisdom through wisdom is any house built through wisdom through wisdom through wisdom through wisdom through wisdom there are times I'm meditating nobody distracts me because at that time the spirit of wisdom comes into my room and begins to bring illumination witty ideas inventions on common solutions that are not known to men hear me many of you will have it may not speak now because of the time component of life but wait until he starts speaking see there are some of you i tell you the truth Zaria is too small for you everybody is watching you but you know that what is inside you is bigger than Zaria is bigger than Nigeria that young man called Zuckerberg before Facebook went far there were people who wanted to buy it before the idea became global and they wanted to buy it for 8 billion he had not even become a millionaire then he was just they wanted to price his idea he said no i know this thing will shake the world eight billion is too small at that level see i tell you the truth in my mind i've left zaria in my mind i'm out of this country there are some of you the bible says there are some people this earth was not worthy of this earth was not worthy of you are seated in the crowd some of you as you are looking at me like this that's how one day you will sit down wisdom will give you a seat there are no vacant seats only the one wisdom creates the seats in nigeria have finished but wisdom can make room it can give you a seat i bring you a message 
stop wasting your life and wasting your time galloping in confusion you can walk circumspectly no matter what the price is pay it with wisdom and you will know you are paying it for the last time hallelujah rise up on your feet let us give our generation what our fathers did not give for the next five minutes we are going to cry I want you to take it serious you're going to cry your heart the Bible says let him ask of God I have seen this in my life in a measure I can tell you there is something called the spirit of wisdom you will shock men lift your voice and begin to cry Sekete prekete belerererebos Anda prate katayadabasa Wisdom is the principal thing Wisdom is the principal thing Wisdom is the principal thing Shoko prote kete Thank God for your degree But get wisdom Thank God for PhD But get wisdom Thank God for books But get wisdom Shekete te pokoto pray Rekete koso telekosa, reko bros kerierebos. That divine ability to take the word of God and translate it. Come on, pray, sister. Pray, my brother. Pray for the sake of your generation. Pray it. Say, Lord, I always knew I'm not ordinary. Sheko bros kepo shekete. Come on, pray like a warrior. Pray like a champion. Pray like a destiny shaker. You will do terrible things in righteousness. You will do terrible things. The wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. You will shock men. You will shock men in business. You will surprise people in entrepreneurship. You will bring for things that have never been done before in your career. You will excel through wisdom in your academics. Wisdom will give you a place that your age cannot give you. Wisdom will take you beyond your geographical limitation. Pray. 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 I receive this wisdom. Take it serious tonight. This is a destiny decision. Take it serious tonight. This can mean the difference between you and other people. Show close to me. A God yata. Maka preke teke te boko. Nina tabosa. Nima umato saria. Era ba 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 ba. Teke 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 boko. Teke boko so preke te boko. Nina tabosa. Nima umato saria. Era ba 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 ba. Teke boko so preke te boko. Nina tabosa. Nima umato saria. Era ba 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 ba. Teke boko so preke te boko. Nina tabosa. Nima umato saria. Era ba 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 ba. Lord, change my life. Change my life. Change my life. I'm ready to leave the realm where I am to a higher realm. I am tired of this level of finances. Tired of this level of leadership. Tired of this level of grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are going to pray right now and say, Lord, I receive a baptism of love for you and grace to bless your people. Lift your voice and pray. A baptism of love. A baptism of love. Beyond church. Beyond church. Beyond prayer meetings. A baptism of love. 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 A baptism of
Self-centeredness from my life forever. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, kill it. Greed. Self-centeredness. Take it away from my life. That mentality of I, me, and myself. That mindset. You are just thinking of yourself. No, you will never access wisdom that Go break the day. I kill self-centeredness in the name of Jesus. I consider others better than myself. The spirit of greed depart from God's people. In this Nigerian mentality of greed, this Nigerian mentality of self-centeredness. Be God from us. We are the blessed ones. Empower to bless mankind. 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 Fire is burning in this place. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. I will read this and we will take the last prayer point. I tell you, this wisdom is hitting somebody in this place. I know it. Some of you will write it from this night. Listen to me. Proverbs 18. I will read it. Oh my God. Some of you, your, your family will thank you on their knees. They will thank you. They will thank you. You may look like you are nothing. I don't care how your past has been. God specializes in using the things that people think. Some of you have failed so much in life. You don't ever think you can make it. I tell you, take advantage of this wisdom. And see how you will be in command of life. Hallelujah. Listen. Let me just read this quickly. Listen. Proverbs 18. This is wisdom speaking. Doth not wisdom cry. And understanding standard up. Standard understanding put forth her voice. Listen. She stands at the top of high places. By the way of the places of parts, listen. She cries at the gates and at the entry of the city, at the entrance of the doors. Unto you, O men, I call. This is wisdom crying, calling for attention, calling businessmen for attention, calling entrepreneurs for attention, calling ministers for attention, calling family people. Wisdom is begging. And saying you have paid attention to other things. Can you not give me your attention? There is a baptism going on in this place this night. He said, Oh, ye simple, understand wisdom. And ye fools, be of understanding heart. Hear, yeah, for I speak of excellent things. And the opening of my lips shall be right things. He said, all the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing crooked. Wisdom that will take you above tricks and pranks. Receive my instruction, verse 10. And not silver. Stop chasing money. Stop chasing money. Stop hustling. You will waste your time. Even if you get it, it will not be sustained. 
it will give you high blood pressure it will give you stroke wisdom will give you success with rest listen 11 for wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared with her he said i wisdom i dwell with prudence and i find out knowledge of witty inventions verse 14 we'll just read 14 to 16 and we'll stop listen it says counsel is mine there is no foolishness when you walk with me sound wisdom he said i am understanding and i have strength verse 15 by me kings reign kings don't reign by election are you hearing me by me kings reign this is wisdom telling you the things it has done by me kings reign and nobles and even the judges and princes decree justice by me princes rule and the nobles and all the judges of the earth listen 17 i love those who love me and those who seek me early shall find me those who seek me early those who seek me early hear this verse 18 final verse riches that men die for riches that men die for he said they are with me they are not in Aso rock they are not in london they are not in any bank i tell you they are with me riches and honor are with me yeah durable riches long lasting riches and righteousness we are going to pray final prayer point you are going to say lord let this wisdom fall on me many of you as you pray this prayer i tell you the wisdom of god will hit you some of you will sleep this night you will wake up with visions lift your voice and begin to pray let it fall oh god let it fall oh god wisdom from above make leaders with wisdom let it fall wisdom that will shock the world wisdom that will shock the business world wisdom that will shock the entrepreneurial world Aya. wisdom that will shock men in your career wisdom that will make your degree meaningful wisdom to produce a model family wisdom to live perpetually in hell wisdom to command prosperity cry the wisdom is falling the wisdom is falling the wisdom is falling shake it take it take it take it take it take it open the heavens oh god open the heavens oh god open the heavens oh god receive a baptism shake a boriata koinonia be baptized with the spirit of wisdom koinonia be baptized with the spirit of wisdom koinonia let it fall let it fall let business moguls arise from this wisdom leaders the true secret of kingdom success the true secret of undeniable kingdom success lift your hands everybody lift your hands see 
Listen. Listen to me. I tell you something. Take this wisdom from my life and there is no Joshua Selman again. This is the mystery behind this young man you are seeing. If you can believe this, the day God told me I was not on stage, the day God gave it to me, you were not there. I tell you, students of the school of the spirit, I want to release upon you a key tonight. I want to release upon you something that will mark your life. For if you believe it, truly, you will receive. You can argue it, you can sit down there and watch others, or you can humble yourself and say, Lord, this is it. This is it. My spirit tells me this is it. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Out of the abundance of grace that has been given, I want to pray. I pray that as I declare, may it come upon somebody. Right now in the name of Jesus. Father, you gave me this message. This is the secret that scientists have not been able to discover. This is the realm that defies the limitation of man's wisdom. This is the true secret of kingdom success. We started building last week and I want to pray. I tell you the heavens are open in the name that is above all names. At the count of three, I tell you it will hit this building in a very mighty way at the count of three i just like you to shout after the count of three i receive and begin to receive it in your life it will change your life are you ready now one two three lord let it fall take it take it take it take it take it take it take it, take it. Take it. Take it. Receive it a baptism, a fire, a baptism, the fire of wisdom, the fire. It comes from above. Let it change your status. The wisdom of Solomon. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Shake it, 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 it. Be marked with wisdom. Be marked with wisdom in business. Be marked with wisdom in your job. Be marked with wisdom. Wisdom to speak. Wisdom to preach. Wisdom to attract wealth. Wisdom to attract honor. Wisdom for health. Take this wisdom and rescue your families. Take this wisdom and change your CGPA. Take this wisdom and change your marital status. Take this wisdom. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take this wisdom and end poverty in your life forever. Take this wisdom and stop begging forever. Take this wisdom and be in command. Command in ministry. Command in business. Command in your place of work. Command in your home. You may be the last born, but let this wisdom take you to the front hallelujah hallelujah i pray for you tonight as many of you sleep i declare the experience of solomon let it happen to you in the name of jesus May the angels of wisdom visit you. May the God who gave Solomon wisdom impart you tonight. That business idea you have been praying and fasting for, 
tonight let it come by wisdom in your place of meditation let leadership wisdom come upon you hallelujah I pray for you the same way the cattle of Jacob were spotted so that anywhere you saw them you knew that these were Jacob's cattle I pray for you because you have come for koinonia tonight favor has been our mark in this place but to that favor I add wisdom to you I add wisdom to you go ahead and give God thanks go ahead. thank him I tell you something has happened to you this night hallelujah hallelujah spend time spend time meditating stop running around where are you going say I'm looking for money no go back to your secret place may God raise wealthy people here Amen. you know what to do with money so God is not afraid of giving you I pray that one favor connection don't say I am young that's a curse I pray to you receive it ladies don't say we are ladies receive it in the name of Jesus hallelujah listen you are here and you've not given your heart to the Lord what a night that God is releasing wisdom I want to pray for you right now or you have given your heart to the Lord once but you've really found yourself distracting you, are, you have been distracted here and there the author of wisdom is calling you tonight for a fresh start please make sure you do not hear this voice tonight and just take it lightly because God is doing great things if you are not born again you do not have access to this wisdom I don't care even if you fell down it doesn't work that way so to make it right with God or make a first time decision for God please leave your seat and come out here right now right now if there's anybody like that leave your seat and come out here right now and I will pray with you in one minute we have people like that very quickly I'll give you one minute quickly we're out of time anyone making this glorious decision don't be ashamed appreciate her bless you sister bless you sister bless you my brother I see you coming keep appreciating them bless them bless them bless them God bless you. God bless you. Don't be ashamed. You are encountering true wisdom tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming out. This is unto the Lord your maker. You will mark this day as a turning point in your life. Lift your hands and pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I ask you tonight to be the Lord of my life I repent of my sins and my old ways I declare that from today I'm saved I'm a child of God Holy Spirit come and live in me and grant me this great wisdom from today I am a different person in the name of Jesus let me pray for you father thank you you have brought these ones by your spirit change them let this not just be an emotional experience change them in the name of Jesus Christ I want to pray for you listen you will never lack wisdom in your life again in the name of Jesus Christ you are blessed please follow the ushers in one minute they'll have your details and we'll follow you up tomorrow by 5 p.m at chapel god bless you thank you sister
Please keep standing. We'll soon be out of here. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, this is your first night here in Koinonia. I'd like you to leave your seat and come out gloriously. We want to bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Bless you. Bless you, man. Appreciate them. Bless you. Come on, Koinonia. This is not your best. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord brought you here to access wisdom. The Lord brought you here to access wisdom. Hallelujah. Keep coming. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. We celebrate you. Thank you for coming. The Lord brought you here to bless you. Hallelujah. How many of you were blessed today? Thank you so much. Do something with what you have received. You can be emotional about this teaching and it will never change you. But if you do something with it, no power in existence can stop it. Hallelujah. We are anointed people and we want to pray for you. If we pray for you, you are blessed. I tell you, saints of God, stretch your hands as we pray for them. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. We command that you will go back with instant testimonies. You will know that God is in this place. We bless you with a fresh hunger for God. We bless you for depth of we bless you with hunger for deep spiritual things we bless you with wisdom you will go back with a traceable mark of wisdom in your life hallelujah thank you so much dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.